buckle up for this one. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope you have your coffee with you. Today is Monday, June 26th, and welcome to the Matt Coors Live Show, where I'm Matt Coors and you're the live show, so it kind of works itself out. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope you're ready for a fun-filled week in the market. Last week, a little bit of a shortened week. This week, a normal one. Actually, the end of a quarter, and we have PAL speaking twice. We have GDP. We have PC, so a very important week. And then that leads us into, once again, kind of a shortened week because of Independence Day, July 4th. That's Tuesday. So the markets are closed all day, Tuesday of next week, but then it's also a half day on Monday. So kind of a, a really short week. I would argue next week is essentially just Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This week, full week with a lot of announcements, updates, and just to add a little fun into it, a little sprinkle of fun and chaos and really why today's called Buckle Up. I don't know if you checked the news over the weekend, but Russia was pretty close to a freaking civil war. And I'm fully aware it's one of these things where what's being publicly relayed, it's probably true, but it's probably not the full truth. So we're going to be getting into that because obviously it could be causing some craziness, especially within the oil markets. So I kind of want to cover that and all. So it's just good to be informed about everything that's going on there. But I would argue as of right now, one of the that's probably the biggest piece of news from over the weekend is just what in the world is truly going down in Russia. And before we get into it, I just want to really start off and say that obviously we're not going to have the full truth because that's just the way these politics, global politics really work. So we're going to be talking about that, the potential interaction with the overall global markets, just to know what's going on there. I have some news on individual equities, such as what's going on with Tesla, taking a little bit of a hit because of a downgrade from Goldman. I have another story on Goldman, uh, an update, a positive update on PacWest. Their stock's up if you want to check that out in a pre-market. Lucid partnering up with Ashton Martin. So Lucid's up in pre-market as well right now. We have some earnings to talk about. We have some seasonality to talk about. We have a crazy story. Whoa, how did I not start with that? First of all, shout out to Street Beat. They are the sponsor of today's stream. Check them out, pin to the top of chat in the description of the video. If you're watching me right now and you don't have Street Beat yet, my question to you is, what are you, what are you doing? But before we get into all of that, arguably the most important thing is by a very, very strange turn of events in my life. Here, there I was, Friday. I end the stream and I have to hop on the train and get all the way out into East Brooklyn. I'm looking at some wedding venues. And while I'm doing that, like you're going in the tunnels, I'm losing service. It's coming back because, of course, I'm yellowing zero DT options when I'm in and out of service. We're doing the tour, and every three seconds I'm checking it. And then my fiance, she's like, well, I'm meeting up with these friends. We're going to a concert. What do you want to do? And I'm like, dude, I'm far away. I don't really want to get on. Like, I don't know what's going on. So I text my buddy who lives out in East Brooklyn where we were. I was like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, actually nothing. I was like, great, let's meet up. And we meet up buddy like i've known him for a while he's actually in the world of trading super smart guy super informed guy we always have great conversation and he's kind of a guy that is far more connected in the manhattan new york brooklyn scene than i am he's like hey dude i don't know if you're still playing poker but like there's a pretty interesting poker game i think you're really going to enjoy these people and i was like yeah i have time to kill fiance is at a concert like i'm not doing anything tonight so we have dinner and then we go to this kind of like, I don't know, kind of like a dive bar. I don't know if it's even really a bar. It seems like it was just a hangout spot from like just these old timey Italian dudes. And I don't know if any of you in this world have ever had the pleasure of just hanging out with old school European grandparent types. But this, this was just a room, a poker table of old school Italian guys. I don't know if there's a more comedic group of people on this planet non-ironically they're going back and forth and they're like forget about it forget about it like that like the way canadians just say a to like end a sentence like that's just part of their vernacular these guys were so so funny and they're not ironically forget about it like it was just the most old school new york you could have possibly gotten and i shit you not at one point they order pizza the guy calls him up and of course it's all these names like just they're all like italian brooklyn names 
they call up a pizza place. They're like, Matt, you want some pies? And I was like, yeah, I'd love some pizza. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you to offer. They call him up. He's like, hey, Tony. And like, I, I, I mean, I wish I was making this up. It, it was so stereotypical and it was so funny. Like, it still puts a smile on my face. He's like, Tony, he's like, I need three pies and you better not burn it this time, but it better be crispy. Like, he's yelling back and forth with the pizzeria dude. He was probably knew him as a friend, maybe it was family. I have no idea. But it was one of the funniest freaking things ever. It, it was, it was absolutely hilarious. So, for any of you who ever have the opportunity to just play poker, with just like old school European people. And it's just like a group of dudes who it's basically like, they're like probably their bachelor pad, but from decades ago, and then they just kept it rocking. I highly implore you to do so because it was a 10 out of 10 experience. 10 out of 10, forget about it. Just forget about it. <laughs> like, dude, it was so incredibly funny. But anyway, that's what I got up to this weekend. Um, then obviously beyond that, I'm still on my like, weight loss get ripped cut journey so that means i was sweating like no other it was really muggy in manhattan and i was doing all these like workouts and stuff and it was super super hot but yeah so we're doing that officially down seven pounds as of now which i feel like for two weeks is pretty solid obviously i keep end up cheating on the weekend you might be thinking whoa 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 you're eating all this pizza i'm like yeah on the weekends i cheat basically monday through friday i keep it on like keep the train on the tracks and then on the weekend i just end up cheating so i could be going faster um so that's kind of it i'm ready for the fourth i'm ready for some lake stuff i'm ready for some fireworks i'm ready for some barbecue but obviously before we get into all of that we have a huge week of trading. So yes, over the weekend, on um, the giant political scale, crazy things going on in Russia, obviously going to prompt some volatility in the market. We got to go over that, pay attention to it, especially in commodities. I want to really, really track what's going on oil on top of all that news. So from there, then there's updates on individual companies. We'll be getting into that seasonality. I'm going to call out all the major macroeconomic events for you to pay attention to this week. Uh, we get, I think, new homes to actually I have the whole list. We get new homes tomorrow. Powell speaking on Wednesday and on Thursday. The Fed's bank stress test will be on Wednesday. We get the Q1 GDP on Thursday. And then also the next inflation report, the PC, the personal consumption expenditure report comes out on Friday. So huge, huge week before we get a breather. This is kind of like that last set in the gym, the last mile that you're running, like we got to finish strong and the, the month and the quarter. Really, we conclude the week, the month and the quarter so wild stuff going on. Wild, wild, wild. So hope everyone's ready. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope it was fun. Hope it was whatever you wanted it to be. I hope you had a good one. Um, if you haven't already, smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And most importantly, maybe show a little bit of love to Street Beat, your AI co-pilot to invest in the stock market. It's pinned to the top of chat. It's in the description of the video. If you haven't already, just download it. You could get it on your iPhone. You could get it on your Android. Go to Street Beat, download it. It's free to download. When you're filling out your application, the very first page is going to be a referral link. Put in the code Matt, M-A-T-T, -T, and that's how you get anywhere from five to $5,000 as a bonus to pawn it. And like, it changes based on the size of your initial like deposit. That's how you get more. So the more you deposit, the more of a bonus you get. Obviously, it's a marketing tactic for you guys to check it out. And I highly recommend you do because it's AI tool suite is the coolest thing I've seen available to retail traders. The thing that I really want to bring your attention to today is if you don't have Street Beat already, when you look into it, you're going to see that they have all these different trading strategies. One is called USCB, US Congress buys, US Congress something. What is it? US Congress, US Congress, US Congress buys. Okay, USCB. If you look at it, basically it's just mimicking what Congress is buying and selling. So whatever they're buying, you're buying. Whatever they're selling, you're selling. You are mimicking Congress and obviously it's weighted appropriately. The craziest thing to me is if you look at all the major timeframes, the past year, year to date, six months, three months, last month, that one has beaten the S&P 500. So for just example, over the past year, USCB, this strategy that obviously it's easy you just hit invest and it does all the buying and selling for you in the past year it's up 30 percent while the overall market's only up 15 percent as in our congress has doubled the overall market they just didn't outperform the s p 500 they've doubled the s p 500 in the past year now obviously i have my own moral qualms with it i don't think they should be able to trade at all but once again 
they make their own laws of if they could trade or not. So I'm not really going to be holding my breath on if they're just going to stop doing it because I think they're greedy individuals. I think they're power hungry. I think they're greedy. I think they're in there to line their own pockets. That's my own opinion. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. But in the meantime, yes, we could argue about like the morality of Congress people being able to trade. But in the meantime, if you want to mimic them, you might as well do it. I mean, it, it, this makes it so incredibly easy. You just click on that strategy, you click invest. It does the buying and the selling for you. You buy what they're buying. You sell what they're selling. And the historic performance it is no joke. Uh, it's honestly crazy how much Congress has beat in the overall market. So if you want a piece of the action, Street Beat, I don't think there's any other platform that makes it so incredibly easy. Once again, pinned to the top of chat in the description of the video. When you download it, just put in that code, Matt. It is free to download. Uh, if you don't want to use strategies, you can also buy and sell stock yourself, or you could do whatever part of your portfolio is you buying and selling, or you could use strategies. This is just one. There's multiple. You can be like create your own. There's a lot of cool stuff on, going on there. Highly recommend you check it out. If you have any questions about it, DM me, DM the team, and I'll if I can't answer it, I'll get you connected with the team. They're very, very cool people. So I think you're going to have a blast. On that note, we should take a look at the overall market. Right now, uh, Friday was kind of a weird day. Uh, we popped a little bit, sold basically. We just quadruple bottom and the market closed, closed, closed closed and now we're showing a little bit of weakness in pre-market as you can see tesla is particularly weak uh closed at 256.60 currently trading in 252 Qs are holding up a little bit stronger than the spy as in tech once again this is no surprise tech stocks are still holding better than the overall market and then the small cap sector is the weakest that's the recent performance we've been seeing it and in terms of the spy and the nasdaq the major thing leading it higher and higher and higher is good old apple a a p l is i mean it made a new all-time high on friday it, it's just crushing it it this is a, it's in excess of three trillion dollars apple absolutely destroying so definitely some fun things to pay attention to stock futures slip to start the final week of trading in june so this is the last week the last month of the quarter this is big and I'm of the opinion that Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Fed, is going to have to use this exact week to set up the tune and the tone for the remainder of the year of what's going on with inflation, what's going on with monetary policy. We kind of need to get things together, and a lot of people are calling out for a mild recession. A lot of forecasters are basically saying the second half of the year, definitely not going to be as good as the first half of the year. For many reasons, I agree with them, but it is all an interesting setup as we get into the next calendar year, which maybe some of you remember will be an election year. So there's going to be a lot going on with the market. Things will probably get a little, little a little froggy at the end of the year. And I don't mean that in a good way. I mean that in, I think the high we just saw in the SPY, actually, I'll say it once again, but I've been calling this out for a minute. I think this high of 444, I was calling it out on Wednesday. It ended up making the high on Thursday. I was off by a day. Sorry, sue me. I'm not perfect. I wish I was perfect. I wish I was a fortune teller. I was calling it out on Wednesday. I was off by a day, but I believe that this high will be the high water mark we see for a, a decent amount of time kind of a medium term call out might be right might be wrong this is just my opinion that is not in any way a signal for you to go long to go short obviously do your own research do your own dd but based on what's going on with the fed and then being hawkish actually surprisingly hawkish probably getting two 24 25 bip rate hikes between now the end of the year inflation is still not where we wanted it to be we're seeing actually some of inflation is surprisingly sticky relative to what everyone forecasted it and now you add in just continued conflict of what's going on in russia russia and ukraine things are just we're in an uncertain time. We're actually even getting some other reports. I don't know if you guys saw it over the weekend. Some banks in Australia are putting really low limits on how much money you can take out. So that's a bit concerning. We're getting reports out of China that their economy is not as hot. It's not as good as it should be right now, like coming under expectation. So there's just some weaknesses and some uncertainty is clearly starting to brew. So I just wanted to share that with all of you. And obviously I'm gonna do my best job to articulate what I at least think it means, what it doesn't mean. So once again, just all my opinion, I highly recommend anything I say or do take it with a grain of salt. You should be confident in your own positions, even if that's just sitting on your hands. But this is just, I guess, how I view some of these things. So the major story over the weekend involved this dude, the president of Russia, 
Putin and actually a pretty crazy like short-term civil war, I guess is maybe the best way to put it. Wildness is really the best way to put it. Putin faces historic threat to absolute grip on power in Russia. The Russian leader diffused an armed mutiny, but doubts about his rule are growing. This is something that's going to go down in the history books. This isn't just like a little side story that we're paying attention to for now. What's happening and what just happened and how things are probably going to play out over the next week or two. This is definitely something going straight into the history books. Vladimir Putin managed to avert an attack on Moscow with an 11th hour deal with his mutinous mercenary commander. But the uprising has pierced his aura of total political control over Russia unlike any other event in his nearly quarter century in power. Insiders in Moscow were stunned that he ignored repeated warnings that Wagner chief. So if you don't know what Wagner is, it's a very large funded, uh, very efficient mercenary group who is led by Yevgeny Prigazin, I believe is how you say it, uh, was preparing to bring convoys of heavily armed fighters to the capital. Instead, the Russian leader allowed them to get so close authorities had to deploy tanks and troops in defense. That's fueled once unthinkable doubts about the legendary command of the country. So if you rewind to just Saturday morning, everyone was kind of on like the edge of their seat wondering, is... Evgeny about to die? Is Vlad about to die? Like, what, what, what's going on here? Like, there was a huge power struggle. Uh, it actually quickly got diffused, but I don't really see an avenue in which both of these men remain alive. Um, there's a lot of crazy theories going around right now of what was the goal. A lot of people are pointing to kind of a, a nuclear center that the Wagner group stopped at before retreating. Apparently, Evgeny is currently in Belarus, like leaving. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot going on. Um, so I just, once again, I'm fully, fully aware that anything in the news right now, this is probably just a portion of the truth. There's probably a lot more going on. And uh, I'm going to do my best to try to cover it. And I understand that maybe some of it is conspiracy or maybe you, you have uh, ideas yourself that might be labeled as a conspiracy that you think are accurate. And like maybe the news isn't telling us. And I fully agree with that. I think we're only getting a portion of the picture. I think this whole thing is truly, truly wild. But obviously, this is going to have a clear impact on the market, a clear impact on the market. So I think we should do our best to try to piece through what is accurate what's most likely accurate and maybe what's like just a little bit of fluff in terms of the story because obviously we all know headlines sell so nato chief says mutiny reflects putin's mistake so here we'll play this who is yevgeny Prigozhin, the former caterer who went on to lead a powerful mercenary group that marched on moscow born in 1961 Prigozhin was a petty criminal in his early life and was jailed for nearly a decade he later became a hot dog seller and then involved in several businesses including like that. He's a hot dog seller. Turned this, Prigozhin became known as Putin's chef, personally serving food to the Russian leader at dinners with dignitaries. The two appeared to share a close relationship. In late 2022, Prigozhin admitted to being the founder and head of Wagner, a Russian private Wagner. military contractor. This after years of denials and even using European courts to sue those who suggested he led the group. The mercenary unit had close links to the Russian military and intelligence community. Wagner, set up eight years earlier in 2014, was utilized in the capture and occupation of eastern Ukraine. Prigozhin's group extended the Kremlin's influence overseas, while allowing Moscow the ability to deny any involvement in any of the group's operations. Wagner has been identified in aiding governments fighting conflicts and stamping out dissent in the Central African Republic, Syria, Libya, Mali, and Sudan. Wagner's fighters have been involved in some of the fiercest fighting in Ukraine, notably in the capture of Bakhmut in the east. Prigozhin turned to recruiting criminals from prison with the promise of freedom. Hit by heavy casualties, Prigozhin grew increasingly vocal in his criticism of Russia's conflict in Ukraine and military strategy. The Wagner chief directly blamed Defense Minister Shoigu for a lack of ammunition and weaponry. Prigozhin later claimed Defense Minister Shoigu ordered an airstrike on Wagner troops and retaliated by sending his contractors to take and hold towns in Russia in what he called a march for justice to Moscow. At the time, Vladimir Putin saw this as treason. All those who deliberately embarked on the path of betrayal, who prepared an armed rebellion, 
embarked on the path of blackmail and terrorist methods. While Prigozhin later calling off his march said he was loyal to Putin. As for betraying the motherland, the president was very deeply mistaken. We are patriots of our homeland. We have fought and are fighting. I don't see how this is going to end as like peacefully as it's currently being pitched. But anyway, that's a little bit of a background on this guy. Uh, I guess hot dog salesman turns into kind of a right-hand man-esque person to Putin. And then from there, like running Wagner, which is a huge mercenary outfit that is obviously currently active in Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, all that good stuff. Putin's weakness laid bare after 24 hours of rebellion in Russia. So basically from Friday to Saturday, things were pretty saucy, but now things appear to be calming down. A so-called 24-hour coup by Russia's mercenary boss, Yevgeny Prigozhin, ended in his anti-climatic pullback from Moscow on Saturday in his unceremonious exile to Belarus. Russia President Vladimir Putin was able to avoid a dramatic and bloody standoff with his one-time ally, Prigozhin. The fact that the upstart Prigozhin could have even mount an armed mutiny with his private military company is an embarrassment and political blow for Putin and his regime. So I would assume he's very, very pissed off at this moment in time. Kremlin says it gave Pergazin deal to end mutiny. So my question for all of you, and here's some information. You can check it out on Bloomberg of what was going on. People were kind of pointing out where the Wagner, I guess, enforcements were stopped. Actually was uh, like a nuclear reactor site. So that might have something to play with it. Like, I don't know. That doesn't seem to be uh, confirmed or really disproven at this moment in time. But... I kind of wanted to bounce off of you is do you believe that it just ends here? Like to me, I, I try to wrap my head around it of, I, I think somewhat of what mainstream media is talking about right now of like, this is uh, if anything, maybe like an ego blow and like it's, it's proof that maybe Putin doesn't have as much control on the nation as he used to. Uh, these dissenting voices are obviously showing that they are at least some level of powerful. I mean, this is the type of stuff that a decade or two ago, this was not happening with Putin. Like people would have, bodies would have just been on the floor and then that would have been it. So it, it's crazy that it got to this level. And granted, you could point out, well, dude, it only lasted 24 hours. Like it did, like there was a quick reaction. But even the fact that something lasted even one hour, I just, it kind of blows my mind. Kind of blows my mind. I personally don't think this is the end of it. I honestly, I don't know if there's been any videos from Saturday to now that even show if like Yegeni is alive. I mean, they say he went back to Belarus. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's kind of unalived at this moment in time. I don't know. I just think there's a lot more going on than maybe the public is even informed about. One of the crazy things I saw this morning though here, I want to, I think, uh, da, 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 let me find it right here breaking u.s intelligence agencies brief senior officials on wednesday of last week that yevgeny was preparing to take action against senior russian defense officials so apparently this has it did just randomly happen over the weekend uh, like even u.s intelligence knew about it like i wouldn't be surprised if in one way or another i don't even know whose side we would be on at this point but obviously it was at minimum a situation that we were at, at clearly paying attention to was their involvement above that i have no idea but also we're the u.s so i wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if we were but uh something nuts and the main reason i'm really getting into is because of the oil markets oil markets breathe a sigh of relief after russian mutiny was aborted remember russia is a big supplier of oil to the world so if there was a civil war obviously supply would be cut demand staying the same prices would skyrocket and then even if you're checking out what's going on with oil at first there was a pop we're coming down a little bit from it now so oil's been relatively dramatic recently we are coming down we're trading in the downward direction but there was a bit of a pop and as that article is referring to yeah little bit of a sigh of relief so as of now 
things seem to be calm, but it feels like we're just, I don't know, almost on the edge of a situation and hopefully we could step back from the edge, but I don't know, something without a doubt to pay attention to. OPEC says oil demand will hit 110 million barrels per day in 2045. So this is just a little bit of more of an like forward looking statement, but from OPEC and their allies here. Global oil demand will rise to 110 million barrels a day in two decades, bringing the world's energy demand up 23%. We'll see global energy demand increasing by 23% through 2045. I kind of see this going both ways. I understand what they're saying, because obviously as more of the world becomes developed, there's going to be a higher demand for oil. But on top of that, as more of the world becomes developed, so is our technology. And a lot of our current technology is getting away from using oil, like obviously black gold there. So it'll be interesting. Um, OPEC, I mean, they're pretty spot on. They're, they're pretty freaking spot on with these types of things. But also, like, I just think about the surge in EVs right now. And then I think about what the world's going to look like two decades from now, and I understand the, the other argument that there's a lot of countries that are going to develop and they're have to going to go through their own industrial revolution, which means that they might need a lot of oil. But if technology gets advanced enough and if the price points come down, what if they just skip the whole oil thing? I guess it's an interesting thought experiment, but really with the explosion in technology and the technological advancements, I think it's kind of tough to predict where we're going to be in two decades from now, because I mean, just the rate of advancement is absolutely sky high. Moving on a little bit international, China economy gloom worsens with weak consumer spending data. China's consumer-driven recovery is showing more signs of losing momentum as spending slows on everything from holiday travel to cars and homes. Domestic travel spending during the recent holiday for Dragon Boat Festival was lower than the pre-Rona levels. Home sale figures are below the level in previous years, while estimates of June car sales showed a drop from a year ago. So that all sums up to not being so bueno. The rebound in consumption after China shed its COVID controls has propelled growth so far this year, but confidence is weak and evidence is mounting that the economy may need more help. After the central bank cut policy rates earlier this month, economists raised their expectations for more monetary and fiscal stimulus, and state-run media outlets have also published a series of articles in recent days highlighting possible avenues of support. So there is a bounce back, clearly, but as it really alluded to, there's, start, there's little signs, little pieces of evidence that maybe the economy is starting to falter. So something to pay attention to in terms of international markets. Bringing it back to the U.S., Goldman Sachs is cutting about 125 managing directors globally. So this is just once again continuing the narrative we know of starting with big tech, continuing with big tech, and also now going into the world of finance of just jobs are getting cut. We are clearly in a situation where large companies are starting to kind of like shore up their resources and we're seeing many, many jobs being cut. Particularly for today, no major events scheduled, but for this week, like I said, PAL speaking twice, we get new home sales tomorrow, Tuesday, PAL's on Wednesday and Thursday, we get GDP also on Thursday, and then we get the next inflation report this week. Friday. In terms of earnings, maybe some of you want to check out Nike. That's going to be Thursday. I know there's some Nike fans in here. Uh, Carnival, I believe, was this morning. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. I'd have to look into that. Other than that, we're not really in earnings season. Maybe some of you are trading Micron just because of the world of semiconductors right now, MU. So maybe you want to check that one out. So there's a couple, but I just wanted to share the list. With respect to today, the seasonality is pretty much neutral. Over the past 25 years, examining this day, the bulls have won 40% of the time. So even though they've won less than flipping a coin, the profit factor is still 1.15. So it was trending down, 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 down. Recently, it had some nice pops. So I, in my mind, they kind of just cancel each other out. So in terms of seasonality, I don't think today is really headwinds, tailwinds. It's just not really the thing I'm going to be trading the most on if anything what i'm going to be looking at is just more of this daily chart of okay we were trending up and now we're making a series of lower highs and lower lows so i would argue over the past week well yeah we're trending down i mean this is the first red week we've had in about six weeks uh so it it does seem as if maybe this is a potential top i wouldn't say it's confirmed yet but obviously we're seeing a bit of weakness it's either a pullback for a rip higher or this is kind of the actual high water mark and we're going to be coming back to potentially 
this gap fill at 423. So I'm watching that, but obviously that's a little bit more of a medium term thing. What I'm watching for today is either the breakout of Friday's high at 435 or the breakdown of Friday's low at 433. We're actually opening up below that, the or no, right at it right now. I guess it depends. We're a couple cents away. But if we still continue to the south side, I will be watching 430 flat, really 429 and some change. So these are the major levels I'm watching in the very, very short term. But once again, seasonality today is pretty much neutral. Five things to know before that bell goes dingity ding 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 today, Monday, June 26th. Summer slide. I think that's a little bit dramatic just because the recent market push from mid-March until now has been greatly to the upside. Uh, Russia revolt fizzles out. We talked about that. Oil markets on God very much. All eyes on court, Supreme Court. This is... Um, the student loan stuff we're going to come back to it uh, a bow on earnings season so a couple this week walgreens and then nike and with that being said i know i'm a couple seconds late but dingity ding 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 the casino is open while we are watching the market open, there are a couple things I want to bring to your attention. I still have, I, I've had spy puts for this Friday for a couple weeks now, so I still have those. I have some dumb degenerate um, DFTs for uh, the spy and the queues expiring today. I have some puts for that, so just really dumb stuff. I don't know why I did it. I have some farther dated IEP puts and I have some farther dated Tesla puts. So the farther dated IEP and Tesla puts, I would argue as my core position, my dumbest positions are spy puts and Q puts that expire today. Don't like that I did that. Probably should have taken my money on Friday. I was hoping for, I was very much hoping for an early morning. I'm actually not down that much, 6.5%. Okay, it, it could be worse. So I was hoping for a quick vomit this morning, but we'll see how things go. We know Tesla coming down, Goldman Sachs uh, going the way of some other analysts downgrading Tesla, basically saying it's like come too far. Like it's just, <laughs> it's running a little hot and needs to chill out. Uh, so that's why Tesla's currently down. Was it 1.7%? So that's pretty much the scene. As always, I'm trying to watch the market for the first 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes today to do anything too crazy. But also, like I said, I do have, uh, I have 100 SPY zero DTEs for today at 433, June 26. And then I have 30 Qs as well for 360. So both are for today, June 26. I have Q puts, SPY puts. The Qs are at 360. The SPY is at 433. Uh, the, the SPY is now green. It's up a little bit. And the Qs are down. I, the SPY position is way larger. I have 100 of those. The Qs, I only have 30 just because the Qs have been stronger. But I am hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that there's like a little early morning vomit right here that I can get out of my position. Uh, obviously, when you're ta talking about zero DTs, it's full on degeneracy. It's a DFT, a dumb fucking trade. Um, and it's just something that I like to be a little bit more fun with it on Friday. And now I'm just kind of carrying that over into Monday, which is where a day should be a little bit more serious about it. So basically, I'm currently babying the position. Like I said, I have 100 of these. I have 30 of these. I am hoping that between well, I'm hoping instantaneously. I just want to see a quick vomit. I would love for the SPY to come down to, actually, what level am I looking for the break of? What was Friday's low? 432.47. Uh, so I want to see a snap of that. 432.47, 432.47, 42.47, 42.47, 42.47. Right there. We'll make this red just so you know that, yes, it is in fact... Friday is low. So I'm looking for a quick test of that. A quick snap of that would be ideal. Uh, Tesla bouncing back because of, I guess everyone still wants to buy Tesla, which is strange to me. Very strange to me. Ooh, was that the dip of the day? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. This actually feels like it's going the way of Friday where I have like in our right position and then it just rips horrendously against me. Uh, seeing a little bit in the a weakness in Apple's opening, but once again, we're three minutes and some change into the day. This isn't really indicative of what's going on. Actually, I want to ask you guys that we're three and a half minutes into the day, almost four minutes into the day. How do you think guys is going to play out? Um, I think a lot of you guys end up v like voting on recency bias, uh, but 
if you looked at a little bit of the larger time frame, I'm not saying pre-market in the open right now. I'm saying if you looked at like the daily chart and you had to give a best guess of how today goes, do you think it's a green day, a red day? Do you think it's a bullish day, a bearish day? What's your overall mindset? Would love to know where everyone's at, where everyone's at. Red, red, red. Oh, some of you are saying the street beat link is not working here. Let me see if I could get a new one. Why would that one not be working? Copy to clipboard. Uh, let me see if I could uh, create new link. Uh, to let me see. Let me see. Create. Okay. Here, I'm making a new one and I will switch this all out so you guys have one that could work. I'm, my apologies. Uh, why did that not work? Okay. I think it should be good now. Could someone just let me know, please, if that one, uh, I just tried to switch out the link. I guess it was linking to some weird video. I have no clue what happened there. It works. It works. Thumbs up on that working. I don't know what I did, but um, you actually don't like need to click on the link obviously you can but i think it's more important that you're putting in that code matt uh but the link should be working now should be linking my working uh the link the linking should be working uh appreciate it. fuck why are we bouncing where are we at Ooh, i'm getting quickly murked here this is I, we've now been noticing this trend. What is it? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of last week. And now it's continuing to today of like just every morning. There's a quick little drop. We're talking like sub five minutes, maybe even sub three minutes. And then just a pump. Like if you look at the opening session, the first whatever, 15, 20, 30 minutes, this is how things have been going. It's just, it, it's just a pop. We open up with some perceived weakness and then it just rips right from there. Crazy. Truly, truly crazy. Uh, bu 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 bu. Yeah, the morning buying friends. It's I, I don't know why people would want to buy, though. Like, I don't see what's going on in this chart that people are like, this this is what I need. I need to be buying right now. I, I just see a series of lower highs and lower lows. So it seems like potentially trying to pick the bottom. And I guess maybe they just view it as, uh, a low risk like i i suppose in my mind i understand people who bought early early because it was so close to the low that hey if it breaks it is just minimal risk but when it starts to rip like this and people are buying on the chase up it, i just i i don't see the risk reward i feel like one of these days if there's a big dump afterwards all these people are just trapped like especially the chasers like i said early if you're in early and you're like nope i'm just risking friday's low so you're in and you're risking about 20 30 cents like whatever if you're wrong it's a paper cut so i get that argument but the people who are buying up here when we bounced the dollar from 432.60 all the way up to 433.60 it already bounced the dollar and then people chase that i i just don't get it unless they're just on a different time frame and like obviously we're all on different time frames. We all have different risk tolerances. Like we're all looking at the market differently. So maybe, I don't know, maybe on a larger time frame there was like some RSI divergence or a MACD or some EMA cross and people bought it there. But for the very short term people, the day traders and the swing traders who are like, yeah, it's up. But I just don't get that chasing methodology of like, oh, it's already up. So like, let's just keep buying it. It, it seems to just blow out your risk to reward. I, I just don't understand. That's why you're a YouTuber and not a Goldman hedge fund manager. Uh, well, sounds like some of those managers just got the boot. 120 of five of them fired. Um, but I highly doubt Goldman is day trading. Like Goldman is probably, if anything, they probably have some sort of quant fund, I would imagine. 
and then probably more so of doing fundamentals and just doing like weekly and monthly rebalancing. I highly, highly doubt that they're looking at the one minute chart right when the market opens. It's just inherently the more money you're managing, like you're actually legitimately running into liquidity issues. So it becomes very, very, very difficult to do short term stuff. Um, it's actually, it is like truly easier in terms of money management to be a small trader just because you don't have to face any of the liquidity issues. It's tough. Like if you wanted to buy like a billion dollars right now, a hundred million dollars of Tesla right now, you couldn't. But if you want to buy five or 10 grand, well, you're not really pushing the market in any direction. It's just like, as a, like I said, a quote unquote smaller trader, you don't have to worry about any of the like slippage of these huge executions and that type of stuff. So I don't think that like there's a Goldman trader who saw this and like, oh, I'm buying it up. All right, I'm going to sell a little like, all right, I'm going to buy it up. It most likely isn't happening like that. Uh, what do we have? Ooh, what did my street be just do? Orders for top government contract recipient strategies. As speaking of street beat, it looks like the, the one strategies just did a little bit of rebalancing. What is it in? So the ones I'm in right now on street beat are the bond ladder. That's where I have most of the money, the top government contract recipients. That's where I have the second one. Uh, U S Congress buys is my third honey badger, which is one I made is my fourth. And then the value hunter is my fifth. And actually, as of now, my five strategies, uh, three of which are street beats and the other two I made myself on street beat, all five are currently in the green. I wish I put more money in the Congress one, but wait, the top government contract, which, what is that one in? Uh, GD, General Dynamics, ACM, A, ACOM? I don't even know if I've heard of that. Just a bunch of government contractors. There's a lot on this list. Interesting. What is the Honey Badger currently in? Honey Badger is currently in GS, BAC, AAPL, Amazon, and Burke B. And the value hunter, these are, once again, my two created ones are in CB, COP, JPM, UMP, and Costco. Costco's up quite a bit. I wish I bought more of Costco. More of Costco for sure. Uh, market's still ripping, which is destroying me. Is there a gap fill on Tesla from Friday? Uh, great question. Let's see. Not anymore. It filled. I mean, as soon as it hit that low, it filled. The The gap fill was at 252.80 and we're trading 50 cents beyond that, 60 cents beyond that. So when we opened today, you could have argued a legitimate trade. We opened at two, $250 and seven cents. You could have, like, our, if you were going for the gap fill, you could have played that up to 252.80, which was Friday's low. So there's no longer a gap. Uh, there was right when the market opened though, if that helps. I mean, I wish, so we opened right here where my cursor is at 257, 250 and seven cents. And then obviously there's an upside gap to Friday's low at 252.80, but uh, we've since filled that. All right. Is it time to go? Time to go to the downside? I, I hope so. The Q's may be showing a little bit of weakness at this yellow line. What is this? The 10 EMA? Yeah, just a 10 EMA. Nothing too special. Uh, the Qs, the tech sector, uh, actually showing a little bit more weakness than the SPY. Maybe it's because of the bounce back in some of these energy plays. But anyway, on the Qs, just intraday, my first thing I'd be watching is 362.57. And on the SPY, I would be watching 433.37, just some intraday levels. But really what I care about on the SPY is Friday's low. Really what I care about on the Qs is Friday's low. Uh, and then on the flip side, the high, I want to know if we're breaking out or breaking down because as of right now, the queues have an inside day, but Friday was also an inside day as in Friday. And thus far today, a non-trending day. If you look at the spy, not an inside day. We did break the low on Friday. We broke the low of Thursday thus far today, though, an inside day, we are within the high and the low from Friday. So, uh, indecisive at this moment. Yeah, on the one minute chart, it looks like we're going up, but like when you zoom out to any larger time frame, we're just not really doing anything too, too much, at least yet. But remember, we're only 13 minutes into the day, and yet Apple is still so freaking strong. Apple, I, I, I tweeted this out on Friday. I truly don't understand 
who is buying Apple at these levels. I, I, I just don't get it. Who would want to be buying at an all-time high? That seems just like a sucker play to me. It really does. I don't think there's any proven methodology where people are just buying at all-time highs, especially when the market seems this rocky. That's obviously just like my own opinion on it. Maybe you know of a strategy where you're like, well, hang on. If there's this type of momentum, like the expected values, whatever, one, two, three percent return, something like that. And maybe it exists. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, but conceptually to me, it, it just seems so wild to be buying at all time highs. I, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it at all. Uh, it's all about Apple. Bill Gates secretly buys Apple, then shorts and dumps it every week. W what? Where are you getting that information? It's all about it. Bill Gates secretly buys Apple then sh and then shorts and dumps it every week. Jason, where are you getting that information from? It feels like you're just creating the conspiracy theory here and then like we're going to end up spreading it. Be like, yeah, I heard from a super credible source that Bill Gates buys Apple and dumps it. <laughs> we, we, we end up finding out that our community is the birth of like just many crazy conspiracies. We were, we were making some good conspiracies there for a second involving like Justin Bieber and Miley Cyrus. That's, that's half the fun of the internet. Half the fun of the internet is just straight up conspiracies market going the exact same as Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, at least Thursday and Friday. We're just, we're seeing strength right at the open. Uh, we've had pretty much now 15 minutes of nonstop buying. That's, that's wild. Fuck, my zero DTs are not looking pretty. Um, to the upside, I don't know if I'd get too crazy about anything until the spy gets above 435, which it's 90 cents away. Uh, I also do want to point out that there is an upside gap fill in the spy to 438.97. That is from Friday, June 16th to Tuesday, June 20th. A uh, bit of a gap down situation there. So uh, upside gap fill on the spy to 438.97 if you are so interested, but look at the spy. The spy has just not stopped. The cues have not stopped. Uh, everything, look at just bouncing right off the 10 EMA. Bounce, bounce. Uh, Apple was below it at first, but bounce, bounce, bounce. Tesla, bounce. It's just apparently the one minute chart is really, really respecting the 10 EMA. Just nonstop, pure buying. What does the futures market look like on um, this? He, look at that rip F kind of a fake out breakdown right here right before we got to open kind of faking out like oh we're gonna open with a bit of weakness and then they just rip it all the way up to basically 4,400 key technical level key psychological level uh key reactionary level the level we're ripping to right now is exactly where the futures market was finding support so much right here just bounce, bounce, bounce. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. And let's see how it goes. Some crazy strength. Oh, I find this to be so frustrating, which isn't good because it means that I'm just not reading the price action. Like I have, obviously I come into this with a bias. I read the news, I pay attention, I have position. So obviously I want things to play out. And then of course, not only does it go against me, but it goes against me in such spectacular fashion that of course I get frustrated. Just like fucking unadulterated nonstop buying, just green, 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 green perfect 45 degree angle just some massive buy programs just buying 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 no breather like whatsoever um it's times like this that i just get so insanely pissed off about it so insanely is this the new normal it is at least within the short term the tough thing is predicting how long this type of trend even goes or this type of i guess market bs like it's just nonstop buying. I also find it funny that when this happens, it's very, very common for retail to act as if this is normal and it's supposed to happen. But I'm telling you, if this happened in the inverse and it was red bars, everyone'd be like, oh, that's manipulation. That's manipulation. It's interesting how in general, the markets, especially retail traders, the retail traders view of bulls is like that's good it's good to be a good uh, bull almost as if it's like moral 
And then if you're a bear, that's somehow viewed to be like immoral or evil, which is weird because like, whatever you things might be overvalued, undervalued up or down. Like, I don't think there's anything that's like necessarily right or wrong. I don't necessarily think that bulls are any more or less moral traitors than bears, but because of that, and like, that's, I know I'm in the minority with that type of an opinion, but when this happens in the bullish direction, everyone's like, okay, great, great, great. That's how it's supposed to go. But if it were coming down, if it was perfectly inverse, like if it was just this much selling, 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 uh, especially in individual equities, then people are like, no, that's manipulation. I don't really get it. I don't really get that. Bears hate America. I don't agree with that at all. Uh, don't agree with that for a second. Bears hate America. What does that have to hate with America? Taking a short position is you just think something's overvalued. There's many, many scam companies that have been pointed out because of short sellers and almost their like investigative journalism that they pull off and they they're, they find out fraudulent companies. I would actually say, if anything's a moral act, I would argue that is a moral act. It's because bears have claws, typical sign of a villain, but bulls have horns, which that's the sign of a villain too, isn't it? Shorting should be illegal? No, it shouldn't. Why, why do you think shorting should be illegal? Who cares? Manipulative shorting should be illegal, but surprise, surprise, it is illegal. Um, like I, this kind of, people love to just be like, you shouldn't be able to short. And that's just, in my opinion, incredibly uninformed. There, once again, are many fraudulent companies that have been exposed and found out because of shorts. If you think a company is a fraudulent company, why shouldn't you be able to short it? If you think it's overvalued, you should be able to play it down. If you think the Federal Reserve is making missteps, if you think this, that, or the other thing, if you want to put your money where your mouth is, whether to the upside or to the downside, you should be able to do that. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about anything that's manipulative. Like, I'm I'm against manipulative shorting as much as I'm against like manipulative longing manipulation in the market. It is illegal that I would argue is immoral, but that happens in both directions and I'm against it equally in both cases. But for people just to say that like, oh, we should ban all shorting. Why? There's no, there's no reason just to be like, I don't like shorting. I like I I've heard zero good arguments whatsoever of just being like, yeah, we should ban it because of this. Um, I, I don't agree with that, like whatsoever. In fact, there's actually been some studies done of the market uh, where they've shown that the overall equities market is more valuable because shorting is in it, as in just like overall indices would be priced at a lower level if there was just never any shorting. So like in a weird way, like long-term investing bulls, they should be happy that shorting exists because studies have been done that the markets are actually higher because of it. Isn't it banned in like can't China and Canada short of thing? No, not at all. No shorts available for C3A. I think you mean no uh, shares available on loan, uh, but that's probably looking at a broker. So if you're like someone just said no shorts available on C3 AI, that's probably just looking at like interactive brokers. Remember, you take shares out on loan to go short from the individual brokers. Like some brokers might not have some right now while other ones do. It's not like there's just like one cohort of where you can get shares from like to go on loan. You would check with different brokers. Um, shorting is power to the people and in inbreds. It's very good. If business is a fraud, why is it trading? That's a very good question. And that's what a lot of shorts call out. So for example, I, I'm of the opinion that GNS is just a complete scam company. GNS, this one, I think it's a scam company run by a scam person. And I mean, the chart shows it pump, dump, pump, dump, pump, dump. I don't think it should be trading. In fact, the company's been like caught lying, reporting 
inaccurate numbers to its shareholders. And so I think, why should you not be able to short this? It's a, like, it's a trash company. And that prediction is right. Look at this. It's fallen from $8 all the way to 74 cents. And I, in my opinion, think it's going to keep going lower and lower and lower. Obviously, I should probably tell you that I have no position on this. I'm not long. I'm not short. I don't have calls. I don't have puts. I don't have any position on GNS whatsoever. So in reality, I don't care where it goes. But to that question, if it's a fraudulent company, why is it trading? Well, sometimes people don't know it's a fraudulent company. Uh, shorts are eating cactus right now. <laughs> uh, shorting AMC and GME should be illegal. I don't agree with that at all. Um, even though I own AMC and I own GME, you should be able to take a legal, legitimate short position, which is completely different than like stock bashing or spoofing or FTDs or any of that. Like there are manipulative practices, but I, if you take a legal, legitimate short position, I don't care where on what equity or ETF or future or crypto it is, as long as it's legal and legitimate people it's the free and open market. You should be able to put your money where you want to. If you have a strong enough opinion and you want to be bullish or bearish on something, you should be able to do that. Uh, obviously, manipulation is a completely different argument, but even AMC, I'm long AMC, I'm long GME, and I still think people should be able to legally and leg le legitimately take a legal short position. Manipulation is a completely different story. Uh, I don't like shorting a company out of business aspect of it. There, I mean, I, I can't name a example. I cannot name a singular example of a good company that was shorted out of business. And maybe you guys can, maybe you guys can find one on Google, but I think that's a lot of verbiage that's like commonly said on like whatever Twitter space calls and Reddit and stuff of like shorting uh, a business like out of shorting a company out of business. I, I cannot find an example of a good company that was shorted out of business. Toys R Us. I mean, you have to look at its financials. That was not a well-performing business. Toys R Us did not have good financial trajectory like whatsoever. It wasn't like it was thriving. It's, I think there's the stats on it are kind of interesting because right now in terms of people who like swing a short position, that's about like 5% of the market. Like if you look at hedge funds and whatnot, most of them are either market neutral or are long. Like it really does pay to be a bull. Like if you're looking at any serious time frame, bulls win. Like even if you do any like strategy testing or anything like that, typically always does better on the long side. Like there's not many people who want to be bare. It's not like half the day people are going long and half the day people are shorting. Shorting, first of all, it, it's a small amount of actual market activity. Most market activity is longs going legitimately long. Uh, but the tours are us thing. Like I, I don't really get that because that wasn't like a company that was thriving and just shorts beat it down to zero. That's not my understanding like at all. Uh, Toys R Us got their board invaded and sabotage. Kind of different than just being shorted in the open market. Good or bad, it's still tons of people out of their job. And yes, it might have happened anyway, but shorting makes it worse. Shorting makes it worse. Well, now it's kind of getting philosophical, but... Like, if it speeds it up, like, there's no... Why would we let a bad company continue to run? Like it, on the flip side, they're still putting their money where the mouth is. Like if AMC and GME is a good example where the shorts are piling up and they're still taking risks, like they could obviously get blown out of the position. So like just because there's people working there, shorting it or not, if it's still going down, like let's say there's no one shorting it, a lot of these companies would still fail. Like even let's let's say in this hypothetical scenario, a lot of these companies that maybe people are pointing out are shorted, even if they didn't short, their business financials suggest that they're gonna be blowing up anyway. Like if you look at something like Bed Bath and Beyond, BBBY, it's just a poorly run business. If if there was no shorts at all, 
BBBY was still destined to fail. It's not like without shorts, it would have all been fine in a thriving business. It wasn't a thriving business. Uh, some companies might have survived without shorting. Well, see, that's my question to you is I can't name an example of a company that was actually well run that was put out of business by shorting. Like, I don't think Toys R Us is a good example of that. It, the, the company wasn't running well. And if it was, another company would have bought it out. Like, so for example, using BBBY, uh, most of it not good, but you have Bye Bye Baby, which is actually an interesting asset and has value. And that's exactly why Overstock quickly bought Bye Bye Baby because they thought it was like a legitimately good business and they wanted it. But that tells you the fact that they individually bought Bye Bye Baby and the rest of it is kind of trash. Well, that's why Bed Bath & Beyond, is, it just wasn't a well-run business. Uh, no access to selling more shares to t fund turnaround efforts. No access to selling more shares. Well, that's uh, typically a shareholder vote if they want to approve more shares. But once again, when you approve more shares to raise money, you're typically driving the stock down. So that has nothing to do with shorting. That's actually an instance of like the shareholders and the board agreeing to take on short-term pay and to raise capital to help fund a potential turnaround. But that when you increase the supply of your own shares, of course, price is going to go down. You're lying, Travis. I'm sorry that you think that I'm lying, but like, I guess, could you be like more specific of what I'm lying about? Uh, bed bath turning around, check back on it in a couple of weeks. It's literally trading under BBBYQ because of bankruptcy. The only truly valuable thing that bed bath has as an asset is bye bye baby and that's why overstock bought it prices artificially low so that they can raise as much capital as they would if it weren't heavily shorted prices artificially low so they can't raise as much capital as they would if it weren't heavily shorted what one are you talking about it feels like you're just like screaming about being a bag holder on something and like i get like obviously it's upsetting to lose money but i think you have to be a little bit realistic about your situations just because you're in something and it goes down doesn't mean it's manipulated sometimes we make bad trades sometimes we make bad investments just because something goes against you does not mean it's manipulated if you're truly if you're talking about bed bath and beyond look at it. it it's a very poorly run business why do you think ryan cohen pulled out why do you think ryan cohen called out the consultants why do you think he called out the board he wasn't calling out everything involved with bed bath and beyond because it was a well-run business in fact it was bad he tried to get in there get a distressed asset and turn it around but it was so bad he pulled out so if you're arguing right now that bed bath it, like it's just a victim of shorting and they couldn't raise money like there's just no actual like evidence to suggest that there's no evidence to suggest it at all and Ron was a legit short. I mean, there's a lot of things. Like, I mean, I can come up with companies, like my question to you, and I'm more than happy to be proven wrong. Like, hey, if you have, uh, no, it's manipulated. What's manipulated? You screaming it's manipulated doesn't make it manipulated. You have to just find evidence of it. Like, where is there evidence of Bed Bath & Beyond being manipulated? Fundamentally, there is evidence of it being a very poorly run company, but also that doesn't mean that it can't be manipulated. I'm more than happy to hear that. You could be like, yes, I get it. The company's not run well, but it's manipulated even further to the downside. And that's fair. That's a very fair conversation we have, but like you just screaming, it isn't evidence of it. You would have to like, the onus is on you to like actually show evidence of it. Like you, you have to prove some sort of evidence. Hello, I legit believe you were bought out by the shorts. I mean, that doesn't happen. That's so silly. No shorts are buying out content creators. That's like the dumbest shit ever. And I, like, if you view the market with that conspiratorial of a nature with zero evidence, like wholeheartedly, the market's not for you. And like, that doesn't make me like, happy to say but you're just not going to survive in this game if you 
are placing money on bets, like in the market, and you're doing so with no evidence. Like if your evidence is random things you saw on Twitter and Reddit, understand who you're competing against. You're going, those hedge funds, those shorts that you referred to, you're competing against rooms of PhD people. Like they have PhDs, they're highly informed, they're well, they have way more resources, they're way more capitalized, and you're just like screaming conspiracy with no evidence. Like, do you like actually think you're gonna ever beat them with that type of mentality? Like, it's just not a way to interact with this. Like, you should be able to come to the table well-informed. And when someone says, like, hey, what do you think? You should be like, I think X, Y, Z, and here's my evidence. Here's my evidence A, B, and C, and this is exactly why. But if your evidence is dumb fucking things you read on Twitter and dumb fucking things you read on Reddit, and more so you're just upset that you're a bag holder, like, what are, what are you doing? Like, how how do you expect to win in this game? Like, at a certain point... I understand this crowd mentality of like, we're fighting, we're fighting, we're fighting. But like at a certain time, at a certain point, you have to respect your opponent. And inherently, that's what went wrong with GME squeeze and AMC squeeze and all that was Wall Street and the people making those bets didn't respect their opponent. They thought retail was dumb, uninformed, and they just didn't think that we would have all this crazy quantitative easing, stimulus checks, and people willing to put their money where their mouth is and YOLO into it and put pressure up against them. But now it's almost the inverse is where, like, you have to always respect your opponent. If you're not respecting your opponent, like, that's inherently just going to be a weakness for you and you could get absolutely destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. BBBY was taken out by the my pillow guy. Matt missed the short on BBBY. Uh, I didn't play it. The last time I was involved with BBBY was uh, like even before Cohen got out of it. And ever since then, it was so evidently going down. As soon as Ryan Cohen pulled out, what what was anything that could have saved BBBY? There was no more public support for it. There were some bag holders who were like yelling that there was public support, but there was no evidence of retail continuing to buy. There was no evidence of a boardroom turnaround. There was no evidence of a fundamental turnaround. I like, I just don't get the thesis. Like if you're going to go long into BBBY, like you should have some sort of thesis. And I don't think anyone's been able to explain a thesis related to it. Can you cover the lucid news? Lucid, uh, partnered up with Aston Martin. Is it? I believe that's the news. <laughs> Ryan Cohen always pulls out. But AMC and Jimmy did squeeze. AMC was trading out one to two dollars and went all the way up to 72 with no fundamental change the same thing with the game stop we squeeze and whoever missed it is mad um i agree with you what you say yeah i don't think there's any questions in there uh but and i also agree yeah things can easily trade out outside their fundamental value and that's true to the upside and the downside um that and things can stay fundamentally overpriced and fundamentally underpriced for quite a while in fact <laughs> it seems like it's one of those things that they start to trade at their fundamental value the second you get out of your position that's like when it seems like it finally returns to whatever thesis um you like thought it should do unfortunately that's i mean the going saying on this channel for the past two weeks it seems is the market can remain illogical far longer than any of us can remain solvent that's a, a truth that i will always preach when it comes to discussions about the market the market will always be illogical longer than any of us can remain solvent it's it's like the ocean it's almighty it's all powerful and any individual it'll just absolutely run over there's no singular entity that's strong enough to fight the tide of the ocean and thus the tide of the overall market it's just not how it works it's too big it's too popular um Griffin is at it again in the crypto market. I don't think Citadel has any interaction with the crypto market. Um, I Maybe I'm wrong on that, but going over their, their filings, I don't think they trade crypto at all. Do they trade crypto? 
A uh, long time listener, loves your streams. Mega dittos. Shout out Highlander Ultra. Uh, they're backing a new US based exchange. Yeah, so it looks like they're attempting to become like some market makers there. But like at, in real time, do they have any trades on the crypto market? They back the EDX exchange, but is that live right now? Or are they just using some of their market making like technology and now applying it for crypto? Like, are they even legally allowed to do it right now without um, like there's obviously there's not much regulatory clearance and they're obviously registered with regulators. Uh, I've already written down my demerit. Matt, have you heard of crab rave token? No, but it sounds like a venereal disease crab rave token like the crabs you get from a rave matt you'll never get a logical explanation from someone that can't explain what they're saying i get that but i also respect the fact that there's other people listening and maybe there's some people who are new to the market i've accepted the fact that right here we have bag holders in chat and that's cool like i I don't want them to lose money. Like my hope, it's weird because some of these things we talk about, like I hope that the small chance that I'm wrong ends up becoming reality because I don't want people to lose money. In chat right now, it sounds like we have some GNS bag holders, some BBBY bag holders, some AMC bag holders, some GME bag holders. I mean, I know the latter two are right because I'm an AMC bag holder. I'm a GME bag holder. So the chances of things like just magically turning around are super fucking low. Like, let's just be honest with each other. But that does it's not zero. And it's not like I'm like, I want that to happen. I want the low odd situation to play out. But I think sometimes people have to admit to themselves when they're hoping for a miracle chance. And that's fine. They're small in bag holders. Like a lot of this stuff, like there's like, I don't know. There's some rhetoric going around in the retail community that there's like, there's a high chance of it playing out. And you just have to have faith. Like, that's what I don't get in the markets is, like save faith for your religion, for your praying, for your thoughts of afterlife. Faith doesn't really have shit to do in the market. This is a mathematical organism with people buying and selling every couple nanoseconds, microseconds, something's going on, there's variables. It's a mathematical puzzle. It has zero to do with faith. There's, there's nothing about faith in here. It's basically how good are you at math puzzles? That's what this is. You should make a bag holder ETF on your generator. <laughs> Worst case scenario, capital lessons can be capital losses can be carried forward if you do well later. Still sucks. True. Yeah, there's I mean, what you could write off like um three thousand a year in losses at max or something like that. Pray to the market gods. The market gods above. Hey. Sometimes they seem to answer our prayers. Other times they seem to be a little quiet answering the hedge funds prayers at, instead. I'm going to like the video when you YOLO zero DT and criticize the one second chart. Max, that's happening in real time. I, I have zero DTs on the spy and on the queues like right now. Um, I have a hundred of the spy and 30 of the queues for today. Um, the spy, I don't want to look at it because I'm, oh, Fuck, that's painful. I have 100 of the SPY, 30 of the Qs. The SPY is 433, and the Qs are 360 for June 26th, as in today. Um, the Qs are down 92% right now, and the SPY is down 55%. So it, it's it's not going my way. Um, I might get lucky if the SPYs can, if the SPY takes out 433.37, uh, we pumped hard. Then we went sideways. We are making a fresh low, but this might be just a little bit of a liquidity grab. And what I'm talking about right here is if you look at this low at the, I'm on the one minute chart, but at 950, see how it broke right below it? Well, there's a lot of people who probably had stops there in the world of day trading land. They probably had stops. So it's kind of some stop loss hunting and they might bounce it off of it. So I'm watching for the reaction right now. Um, if it bounces off of it, which it looks like it might be doing, um, that would actually be some strength. So they pop it up, they consolidate it, they go liquidity hunting, they get all these people to get stopped out, and then they pop it right off of them. Um, that's a dirty way to do it, but it happens in the market all the time. Tesla pushing to the upside, Apple pushing to the upside, Q's pushing, everything's just pushing. Everything, like I'm just getting massively screwed over. Massively screwed over.
did you get Diablo 4? No. I try to be, I try to make a good decision and be more productive. And I spent quite a bit of my time that I would have been playing Diablo 4. Instead, I was coding, working on some algorithm stuff. Uh, I was working on a, um, like, a, overextension whether to the upside or downside uh mean reversion strategy all weekend and it, it's interesting i i like the entry i'm not the biggest fan of the risk management in this strategy right now i want to come up i need to come up with a certain way where if it goes in my favor then it automatically the system brings it to break even at worst i need kind of like a a dynamic risk management system because right now the risk management is a, a crossover in the opposite direction but i was like just doing some spot testing on it and i noticed that there was a decent amount of times where seemingly it went really in my favor and then it still ended up being a losing trade and i was like well for those ones and i know this would hurt my accuracy because sometimes it goes really in your favor it comes back and then it still continues anyway so i'm willing to give up those trades in an effort to really try to get uh, the ones where like it goes really in my favor and then not only do i get stopped out but it keeps going so i'm like well in those cases i would rather it just be a scratch trade so it's it's promising but it's not where i want it to be uh promising but not where i want it to be did you go long or short i haven't made any trades today i'm carrying a really stupid position from friday and it's just this is what's been happening to me even though the market's been trending down on the daily chart it seems as if like we're just we gap down we're showing weakness and look at this thursday friday and today we open week we open week we open week and on thursday it actually held that push on friday it gave the push back and who knows how today is going to end but we're just pushing again uh this is a classic right here this was a legitimate buy around 10 10 10 10 10 11 and 10 12. this was a great buy because people were getting stopped out they bounced it right off of it and it feels like my face is getting ripped off were you involved in the dumb money fill whatsoever? No, no individual traders were. I mean, that was a legitimate Hollywood production. Uh, ben Mesrick was the only actual retail trader that seems to, oh, I don't know how you're really defining involved here, um, but it would be Roaring Kitty. Keith Keith Gill would be the only one. They, they didn't like profile and like, I mean, but also that makes sense because he's the legitimate guy like involved in this story. None of this whole ape thing would have been anything without Keith. Like Keith is the major dude that anyone who thinks they're an ape or anything, that's the like the true OG dude who got this all started. Um, Keith, not Keith, Keith. Roaring Kitty. Is it suit? What are you talking about? No, he isn't. He's the antithesis of a suit. Um, but no, I wasn't involved in it. I believe it's a book. It, like it, The movie's being made. The script was made off a book. And the book was written by Ben Mesrick, who he did like 21. I, we've actually done an interview with him. He's a really, really cool guy. Uh, crazy stories. He's a, he's one of those people that's like lived a lot of life. Um, so anyway, he wrote a book on the whole thing. A script got written from that. The script got turned into a movie and then it got turned into a big movie uh, like with some legitimate people. Nick Offerman's playing Ken Griffin. Uh, Seth Rogen is playing Gabe Plotkin. Um Pete Davidson's in it. I think he's just the friend of the guy who plays Keith McGill, Keith Gill, uh, Dano something, Sebastian, whatever his name is from Marvel. He's playing Vlad. I mean, it's it, it's definitely like a star-studded cast without a doubt. Uh, increased demand for the stock is going to force index funds strong position on higher target price is a must. Two people that annoy me with no one won't be watching that. Oh, well, I'm definitely going to be watching it. Why would I not watch it? I mean, it seems like an interesting movie. Seems like an interesting movie. Did any of you um, watch the documentary 
from the twin brothers about Jimmy. I thought it was pretty well done. I wish it came out. Uh, I mean, obviously, you always wish it came out right away, but um, I mean, the process is really long. So, like, I logically understand why it didn't come out for a while, but I just wish it came out, like, in March. Like, the whole craziness in 2021 for GME was, like, January into February. Imagine if it just came out. Like, I feel like it would have had, like, so much more of, like, a bang. Uh, I fully understand why it didn't, because it takes forever to film, to edit, fund it. Like, it takes forever. Uh, but it's up on Prime now. Do you not have an actor playing you in the movie? No. No. Obviously, uh, it would have to be Brad Pitt, though, right? Uh, are we double topping? Are we going to do the old double top? The fake out situation? Oh, brother. Do I just need to double down and bring my average so I can increase my chance of... Thumbs up or thumbs down? Should I double down on my zero DTE puts just so I have a chance of getting back to break even? Increasing my risk, but also increasing my chances of being break even. Double down, Avi, no LOL, thumbs down. I see two thumbs down. Now I see two thumbs up, three thumbs up, triple down. I don't think I have the money to triple down. Oh, I don't think I have the money to triple down. This feels like it's going to get dumb. What time is it? It's 1020. Base order. Do I really want to do it? Do I really want to do it? I did it. I did it. Now I have 200 spy puts for today. My average went from a dollar down to 73 cents. So uh, this is about to get dumb. As soon as I heard that alert, I did it. So I had 100 zero DTE. Now I have 200. I was in at a buck. I'm now in at 73 cents is my average. And I'm going to cut the full position on the break and hold of 434.50. This is where uh, I need to, 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 to create alert. Yeah. That's where I cut it and just admit that today is not my day. But let's hope today is the high watermark. And if this thing can vomit to da, 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 Friday's low at 432.47, uh, degeneracy for the win. Uh, degeneracy. For the wins. I miss Matt Degen trades. Papa trades, you're you're living it right now, throwing down way too much money for my account on this particular trade. Come on, break down. Break down. The one second is so not helpful. Come on, smash it. Smash it, smash it, smash it. Apple's just so strong. Everyone's just buying Apple, buying Apple, buying Apple, buying Apple. And I just, I can't wrap my head around why anyone's doing that right now, especially the bigger players. I mean, day traders, whatever, cool. Do your thing, you're a day trader, you're following short-term price action. But I'm talking about these players who like, it takes them a while to get in, takes them a while to get out, like the big guys who have like hundreds of millions, billions of dollars. I don't understand the Apple trade. I don't understand being bullish on Apple. It just seems like such a sucker play to be buying at an all-time high. One second, not healthy, man. Uh, yeah, you are 100% right. But I figure this is my, my thought process on it. Looking at the one second chart was unhelpful Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. What's the chance that it's going to be unhelpful four days in a row? You'd feel like eventually it has to change a little bit, right? Like, is that the craziest reasoning? That like, if it's just roughly, if you're flipping a coin, if it's either helpful or unhelpful, and we flip the coin and three times in a row it was unhelpful, unhelpful, unhelpful. And if it's roughly 50-50, well, 
I mean, the odds have to start increasing in my favor, right? Fourth time's the charm. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. I would love to see the Qs somehow vomit below 363 right now. If it's just a nice full dollar vomit. I see Tesla coming down a bit. Apple's just holding. It, people just keep buying Apple. Actually, is that an all-time, another all-time high for Apple? It is. Apple hit a brand new all-time high of 188.05. New all-time high for Apple. <sighs> That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. This is the all-time high. That's just absolutely nuts. How are we looking? So Tesla, uh, it opened up weak ripped eight dollars but now it's showing um so open up week showed a lot of strength but now it's kind of giving that back how's microsoft looking microsoft's looking good amazon uh i don't know what i have on amazon's chart looks like a head and shoulder popped but coming back a little bit nvidia popped coming back a little bit google popped coming back a little bit that seems to maybe be the going trend micron pop came back but now recovering remember micron does have earnings i believe on wednesday of this week so does nike nike popped and now holding at 112 txrh uh why is shelly spamming TXRH. Sorry, I got confused here. What else am I looking into? Uh, Walmart. Let's look at the big players. Walmart coming down. Target. Oh, going up. Opposite. AVGO looking good. AMD. Not too, too much. Uh, Exxon popped a bit. Uh, CVX. Chevron. Okay, oil doing that. Spy's just dancing at 434. Uh, seems to be going 15 cents up, 15 cents down, but just kind of at this moment pegged to that dollar value, which kind of makes sense because that's the ES at 4,400. Like, I mean, if, if the bears are going to actually do something today, look at this. It just kept wicking right above 4,400. Now I'm by no means saying that that's what's going to happen. Uh, I hope it does. Obviously, you guys just saw me double down on my DFTs. Um, but look at this. Just always waking right above 4,400. This might just be like some of the big players getting out. Like they sell, 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 and then let it absolutely dump. I mean, look at 4,400. Key technical level, key psychological level. Let me just here. Boom. They are getting out at a premium. They're selling to the sucker. Sell to the sucker. Sell to the sucker. This whole thing appears to be just the big guys selling to suckers all these wicks above it are people just buying at too high of a price and then it's putting pressure on them obviously could it come back around yeah totally could come back around what is this uh forever okay whatever's going on with shelly sorry about that on rumble shelly's completely gone now um I'm watching this level. I have this marked out just a, a low from how low how long ago is that it must be Thursday's low. So this red dash line that we are seemingly coming up to right now and bouncing off of, this is the low from Thursday. And then the low from Friday is right here, 4,381. So I kind of like to track the highs and the lows from the last two trading sessions just to see if there's a reaction there, if we're slicing through levels. But it would be absolutely dirty if they run the market up here all of a sudden the bigger players know to get out there and then just the bears smash it. Uh, basically whatever they're long, they get out at a premium. There's suckers who get tricked in and then potentially the smart bears getting in there. Um, one way for this to play out, obviously if I had a crystal ball, trust me, I'd be telling you guys, it's just one potential estimation of this. Um, on the flip side, you could also argue, well, hang on, we're just wicking below the 10 EMA and we're not really closing below it. That's fair. Like right now it seems just to be the, the battle of the bulls and the bears. Uh, we just recaptured 434. This one second is disgusting to watch. Tesla, maybe a bit of a recovery. Let's see. The one second actively does increase my anxiety of this whole situation. If you dabble down on spy butts, uh, don't you get deferred losses? I don't know what you mean. 
if I double down as in I have two X, the position two X, the amount of puts that I had, dude, it's just battling it out at 434, which is right under this 4,400 level right under it. Rip, rip, rip. They try to hold it. They can't, they smash it hard. Try to bounce it back up, smash it hard. Let's see. I'm praying for a breakdown. I'm absolutely praying for a breakdown. Come on. Someone, I just, just smash this market. It doesn't make sense to me that we are every single day showing weakness in the morning and then just ripping. I don't get it. And also I want to point out that the London session, if you look at like 2 a.m. to 5, I mean, it just vomited in the London session. This right here, this the start of this vomit was 3 a.m. to 3.45. We just had 45 minutes while most of us were sleeping of the market just going down and down and down. Um, so I'm hoping that the traders across the pond in the London session, the UK traders, I'm hoping they know something that we don't know. I'm hoping this is a fake out pump and we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We will see. It would be nice for Apple to get a smack, but proper smack for Apple would make me feel better about my life. Uh, once again, the spy, it hasn't moved much. We're trading right around 434, 15 cents up, 15 cents down. Um, if Apple can crack 187.44, this recent low, maybe a little bit of a market structure shift, that would be beneficial. The Qs are just coasting sideways. Obviously, I want it below 363.81, but I'd feel better below 363.19. Um, patience, 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 patience. There's not really much to do right now. Matt, what pagan overlord do you pray in these moments of trial by fire? As always, just the market overlords. The market gods above. I bet Apple will hit 200. It would be insane. Uh, I mean, eventually it probably will. Eventually it probably will. We're dipping a little bit. Just that's the 15 cent overextension on the bottom sign. Typically seems to be followed by a pop. Look at that. They bring it 15 cents down. Pop it right back up to 434. Uh, definitely trading in a quite a tight range right now. But seems a bit weak, but man, every time a level's tested, the more it's tested, and arguably the stronger it is. But look at this. They brought it up there again. Come on, just smash it through. Smash it through. Come on, 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 come on. Dude, if I just saw a quick vomit down to 4,300 in the ES futures market. I could just get out of my zero DTEs, call myself lucky, and then move on with my life. It's just Apple's way too strong. Uh, the Qs, maybe market structure shift. Look at, now we have some lower highs, lower lows. Maybe some of the bears loading up in the tech sector. Apple coming down a bit, Tesla coming down a bit. Um, I think the real fire, like the real warning shot on the NASDAQ in my book would be the low 363s. So if it snaps 363, which is 50 cents to go, I think that'd be a legitimate warning shot. And we'll see how it plays out from there. If I had a dollar for every time you said that, I'd be rich. Yeah, dude, same. Uh, Matt, sell your Apple in your long account to drop the price. Dude, that's smart. That's thinking outside the box. I appreciate that. That's that's the kind of thinking we need to make things work around here. How's the spy daily look? Big wick up, but I think the party, the party's a dollar below where we are or a dollar fifty above where we are, either above 435 or below 432.50. I think that's the real party zone. In between that, I think we're just kind of chopping. Just kind of chopping. Come on, man. Just vomit for me, please. All right. It's up to 54 cents. Like I said, my average on those like DFTs, those dumb fucking trades, it's 73 cents. And now we're trading at 58. So I'm, I'm climbing my back way to break even. Okay, a little bit of a breakdown. We're getting somewhere. Uh, they're trading at 63 cents. So I'm off by 10 cents right now. We're getting, it's slowly coming back to my get 
even point. If I was smart, I would take off half the position at my break even point just because then that obviously de risks me quite a bit. It's trading at 64 cents right now. I'm in at 73 and dropped to 60 on that pop right there. Okay. Apple's bending a little bit. I would love Apple to come below 187. Come on, just keep vomiting for me. Just keep vomiting. Mm. This is an untested region right here that is kind of concerning me right here. We just ripped right through it. Big order block. You might have some buyers getting it to bounce right out of this area, which is what we're currently seeing. So even though things are starting to trend, lower highs, lower lows, I, I could definitely understand how some of the bulls are seeing this as a buying opportunity. So basically, I'm just hoping that they're wrong or I'm hoping that there's not enough bulls seeing this. This smack from here makes sense. They tricked a lot of people. The buying in here would also kind of make sense. So this is kind of the point where I feel as if I'm going a little bit more for that Hail Mary. Uh, I need Apple to continue down. I need Apple at 187, ideally below 187, because that'll help the Qs get below 362.60. Come on, just crash it for me. Uh, just bring it down, bring it down. That's a good vomit. The intraday low is 432.60, excuse me. So obviously a level of interest for me. Head and shoulders on the 15 minute spy. That's what I like to hear. What did we find out recently that the spy has a, um, or head and shoulders has a 83% accuracy. How big of a time frame are you on to see that though? Are you, is it more on the three minute like this, like shoulder, head, shoulder. Is that what you're talking about? Hang on. Let me. Maybe I can make it a little bit more apparent, like something like this. But that's right here, shoulder. Something like that, shoulder, head, shoulder with the neckline right here, neckline at, which I mean, if you did it that way, that would mean that your measured move is right here your target if you did that it would be four three eight seven fifty which is pretty much halfway through this first big spike if you're on the three minute so your measured move target would be right about here uh if you're trading the futures market on the spy if you were doing the same thing your measured move target would be at 433, like just above 433, technically 433.09 would be your measure move target if you're playing that head and shoulder. Come on, vomit for me. Vomit for me. Whip out the magnet. Dude, you, you people, you know what's up. <laughs> I can tell you guys are pretty experienced traders if you're already requesting the old magnet. The old magnet. Let's whip it out. When in doubt, whip it out, as I like to say. There we go. Let's send this. Let's send this market to the depths of hell. There we go. Uh, break. Hey, I'm green. That that trades. Um, I'm up by a cent. I have 200 zero DTEs. <laughs> oh man. It just went back under. Should I be selling half of these? I mean, it could legitimately bounce off, off of. So silly. So degenerate. The things I do for entertainment. The things I do just to keep you guys coming back, hitting the like button, subscribing, turning on your notifications. Literally... I'm literally putting my own financial health at risk here just for this. Here we go. Keep going. Keep going. 
vomit that down. Dude, it is storming outside. I don't know how many of you guys are in uh, New York right now, but golly, dude, I'm just hearing this storm, like vomiting, vomiting rain out there. As, as the raindrops come down, apparently so is the market. All right. Golly, ad alert right there. Watching, 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 watching. Keep coming down. Keep going. Okay. Okay. Okie dokity. Okie dokity. Keep going. All right. So here's where I'm at. The spy position, like I said, I doubled down. My average is 73, currently trading at 81. So, um, huge position like a stupid stupid position and basically i needed to go enough i didn't feel like doubling down on the cues because the cues were like on a relative basis stronger and i didn't really see much of the chance of me making this money back on like on the cues so it made more sense to kind of focus on the spy to i don't know i'm considering this play together because they're both zero dtes for today but this is where i'm at Ooh, it looks like we're bouncing a little bit because i'm quickly giving back some of these do i want to get out of half Mm. I need to start getting out soon because they expire today and I'd rather be out. The earlier I'm out, the better. Maybe what I'll do is sell a quarter of the position at a dollar of five. Oh, we're moving now. A dollar ten. Oh, shit. A dollar twenty-five. Come on. I'm, I'm trying to dump 50 of these at a dollar twenty-five. Come on, 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 come on. Where are we? What's going on in the market? We just made that fresh low. I'm trying to de-risk a little bit. Trying to de-risk. They're trading at 109 right now, and you saw me put in my order for 50, a quarter of the position at 125, which will make me feel way better about my life. The cues are coming down right now. 106, it's trading at 106, 104, 103, 101, 103, 104, 103, 105. You missed my super. Thanks, Matt. Oh, Greg, let me go find it. Uh, Cohen always pulls out, so bye-bye, baby. What are your thoughts on ChargePoint AMD versus NVIDIA? Thank you, Matt. Love your channel. Uh, I'm... When it comes to semiconductors, I'm a big fan of NVIDIA. I'm actually a fan of both of them. Um, I would say that right now, NVIDIA is more uh, overvalued from just a fundamental perspective, definitely. But long term, NVIDIA is the, it's the golden child. It has the best product. So from a technological standpoint, I respect NVIDIA the most. I still respect NVIDIA or I still respect AMD. Um, so it kind of depends. Like I like NVIDIA's products the best. They are the best products. But from a fundamental standpoint right now, NVIDIA is way more overvalued. So it kind of depends on when you're asking me this question. But long long term, still very, very, very much a fan of NVIDIA. I'm a fan of both of them, but I do like NVIDIA more. ChargePoint, I, I'm just not informed enough to really speak about ChargePoint. For me, if I'm playing EV, I want to play more of the popular ones, such as Tesla. I mean, ChargePoint, like, it's all in that EV world. Uh, obviously, ChargePoint, like, kind of a related, I guess, company. Like, it's obviously not an automaker. So I'd prefer to play the ones that people are really, really talking about, such as Tesla. Um, I like the industry it's in, but I'm not up to date on its, like, fundamentals or anything like that. Hey, Matt, sorry for being late. I'm working out on the streets in New York. It is wet as hell. Wouldn't recommend it. Dude, dead man. Hey, man, I hope you can some. I, I hope you can somehow attempt to stay dry. I hope you can get a good warm coffee in you because getting rained on, I, I feel for you if you're working out there today. Uh, I definitely feel, if I see what's going on right now. Absolutely wild. Looking out my studio like, uh, dude, <laughs> I definitely get your rest, get your warmth, get a good Dunkin' coffee or something. All right, where are we at? Where are we at here? We vomited all the way down. The Qs have not, the SPY made a new intraday low, but the Qs have not. And Apple right here, Apple bouncing right off of this support region. Dude, is it Apple once again ruining my life? Wawa coffee is better? Probably, 
but I don't think there's many Wawa's in, I don't, are there any Wawa's in Manhattan? Um, so the spy quickly flushed, but it did not hold at all to make a new intraday low. We quickly pierced, we made a new intraday low and we pierced the low from Friday's low. So people are going to be buying there. The golden question is, is an, are enough people going to be buying there to make it a legitimate bounce? If the spy is going to bounce today, this is a pretty realistic area for them to try to get the market to actually bounce. So attempt one, yeah, obviously thus far, we're seeing some sort of a bounce here. The levels like it flushed the intraday low, it flushed Friday's low, bouncing right off of it. The question is, is it going to be enough? You have Apple bouncing off of this support formed at 942-ish bouncing right back up. We'll see if this is just going to be a classic reversion, but Apple's bounce obviously supporting the SPY and the Qs just because it's such a major player in both of those indices. Um, I'm at the point where I really wish that order hit. I'm barely in the green right now. I'm in at 73 cents. They're trading at 76. Um, so I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm praying that this is not a bounce, especially dude. i probably should have just got out there but i didn't know if it was just going to keep vomiting these are the risks you take when you're doing some dfts come on just get smacked for me just get smacked let's go back to the one second feels like i'm more in in tune with the matrix stay below 433 there we go yeah below 433 and then let's get below 432 let's bring this puppy below 432 nope wrong side of 433 nope wrong side Ooh, strong bounce over there in apple Apple trying to take out, recapture that breakdown zone. Look right here. Apple trying to recapture, but it's also going up to its 10 EMA. So maybe it just gets smacked there. Maybe everything's just attempting to test its 10 EMA and then turn back around. Everything's getting a little bit of a bounce right now. Apple, a little bit of a bounce. Tesla, a little bit of a bounce. The SPY, the Qs, everything vomited hard for about 15 minutes. And now we're kind of in that splash zone. Uh, you could have sold above a dollar. I mean, I try to, I put in that order, just think it hit. I think it went up to 120. My order was at 125. And maybe that's just like a psychological issue of just putting like kind of those nice, like quarter increments. Um, I would, I just thought if there was like a little bit more of a pop, uh, in the, the value that premium I could have got out, but, um, Hey, coulda, shoulda, woulda, coulda, shoulda, woulda, could it, what time is it? 1046. I would love to be out of this position like now. Come on, get below 433. The ES, do I need to reposition my magnets or something? See how it's going right back up into this test zone? Hopefully it's just a nice smack. We vomited right through it, sliced it, found support, bounced off a key level right up into this zone. Hopefully it gets smacked there and turns right back around. Would love to take some of my profits off at 4,375. Um, I do. I'm happy that it was rejected at this key level of 4,400. Tells me that some bulls were taking some profits, some bears were creating some positions. Um, so I'm liking that. It's just the question of like the depth of this pullback. So overall, for anything I had longer than one DT or zero DT, I'd be feeling pretty confident about right now. But the fact that I do have zero DTEs means not only am I trying to get a low price, but I care about time. Obviously, like if you're looking at the SPY, 432.50 right now is way more valuable to me in this moment than even in two hours. Like I am actively fighting theta decay. So every single minute that passes, that doesn't go in my favor, whether, I mean, if it pops, that's horrible. Even if it goes sideways though, I'm losing value. Every single minute that passes right now is costing me money. Oh, and this is a strong bounce. Shoot, fuck me. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, man. It's so easy to Monday morning quarterback. And that's like, this is like one of the, like, I think it happens if you're a novice trader, but all the way up to an expert, everyone, like psychologically, you always think to yourself, well, why didn't I just bottom ticket? Like a mad, like we all play that game of like, how much money would I have if I bought at the bottom, sold at the top and just played everything a hundred percent accurate. And it, it's just, it's not a good mindset to have because it's impossible that Monday morning quarterbacking of like kind of doing like your mental math or the back of the napkin math where you're like, dude, imagine if I just like bought right here and sold right here. It's like, yeah, woulda, coulda, shoulda.
Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Uh, we all wish we played it perfectly, but I'm hoping this is just the reversion because we did push down pretty freaking hard. Uh, I'm hoping this is the reversion um, that sets up another vomit. And on the next vomit, I think I'm just... I'm either going to get out of 100% or 75% on the next vomit downward if we get one, if I'm fortunate enough to actually catch one. Hopefully, look at that. Huge vomit down, then perfect buying right back up. Look at this. Just perfectly matching each other. Perfect V-shape. Sell, sell, sell. Consolidate right at the low. Buy, buy, buy. Almost perfectly symmetric. Almost. Uh, Apple's bounce is what's freaking me out. They did bullshit. Fake out breakdown right here on Apple. Little stop. Like there's going to have people who have stop orders right below this. This was the low that they're targeting. They push it below, knock those people out of their position and get it to pop. Uh, oh, why am I like this? Why didn't I? We've now bounced a full fucking dollar. Fuck me. Fuck me. Apple. I, I, I just don't understand who's buying Apple. I full... I, I just want to talk to someone who's buying Apple right now and like have them explain to me what is going on in their head. I want to do a psychological analysis of them because I just don't understand who is, why would you want to buy Apple? Not day trading. I'm not talking about day trading. Day trading, whatever. You're following price action. You really don't care about where we even are on the daily chart or the weekly or the monthly. But anyone who's doing a swing trade on Apple right now to the bullish side or investing in Apple at these levels, I just don't get it. Getting Apple to three trillion, it's past three trillion. It's three trillion. Mark was at like one eighty four, like right around there. It's past three trillion. Stonk go up. That's what it's been going. That's apparently the name of the game is stonk only go up. Dude, look at that. Just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight minutes. What an order block. Come on. Smash them all. Be a higher low. Just crush them. Crush them, crush them, crush them. All right, Apple. Time for you to turn around. I like how Apple is doing exactly the same thing as the SPY, which is doing exactly the same thing as the Q. So the two major indices, the overall market, and then more of the tech heavy one, just like perfectly lockstep with fucking Apple. Perfectly lockstep with Apple. Look at that. Here's the Qs. Here's Apple. Here's the SPY. Tracking a hundred different things, tracking 500 different things, and then just the world's biggest company. I think that shows you the undue influence of individual companies, of the large companies on everything else. Individual company, a hundred companies with the tech focus, and then 500 of the most influential companies all doing the exact same thing. Matt, I have the worst hangover. Brittany, we've all been there. We've all been there. You got to pop some of leave, take a cold shower. Dude, come on. Please get fucking smacked. I need this to get smacked. It's honestly, if I were to do a like psychoanalysis of myself, like it's just like my bias is way too strong for me to methodically trade right now. Like I just like it, like in my core, in the deepest depths of my soul. I just so strongly believe the market is overvalued right now. So even in that, yeah, like I'm in a stupid position, we can all agree on that. And then I was gifted an opportunity to get out with a couple thousand dollar profit on a really stupid position. So any rational human would be like, oh yeah, I'm totally gonna take that because I got lucky. So like, if you're getting lucky, take the opportunity. And then even right there, like why didn't I? even though we all know it's the right move to do. So like 
what happens in your mind in that scenario when you know there's the thing you should properly do in terms of risk reward and then you still don't do it and i guess like thinking about it my reason for that is just like i i'm just so and i don't know if i'm right obviously i don't know if i'm right but like i feel so strongly that this market pump from march until now and a, a, especially the recent rip up it's just such bullshit. Like, I really believe that the market has put the cart in front of their horse, and I don't pe think people are giving the Fed enough respect. I think the Fed is not bluffing whatsoever, and a lot of the market thinks the Fed is bluffing. That's why things are being bought up, and I, I just don't see it. Like, there is a, in my mind, there's a very, very important reason why we have the saying, don't fight the Fed. And in my head and like my understanding of the markets right now it very much feels like the entire market is fighting the fed and it's it, it just blows my mind blows my mind dgen trading at its finest uh, yeah i mean maybe i get lucky again if this vomits i just need like but just look how quick these pops are the cues went from 362 all the way up to 363.60 the cues tracking a hundred different things bounce over a dollar 50 over a dollar 50 in what nine minutes 10 minutes and yeah i'm super like my bias is that it comes down but unfortunately it's it's one thing to have confidence it's one thing to have a like a bias but it's a completely different thing to let that mess up your risk reward in reality what like if I could rewind the clock right now, the way Hermione Granger does to go to all those extra classes, what I would have done is as soon as we hit this morning's low or Friday's low, I would have taken off my whole position. And then I could have taken some of my profits or some of that and just got it myself into a new position. That's a bit more reasonable. And when I say a bit more reasonable, I mean, not a zero DT, something with a little bit more time. Like, I don't know, maybe something expiring Friday, even if I still had the buy. So like, this is what I'm saying is sometimes your bias is so strong that you're refusing to fold on your current hand, even though you can keep that bias and reposition yourself even better. So I don't know, just being dumb, 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 a dummity, dumb, dumb, dumb. I need this. To just die. Come back down to 433. Fucking Apple, man. I just want you to know that if you're buying Apple right now, I hate you so much. I hate you with the burning passion of a billion burning apples. If I had a giant pile of apples and I set that on fire, the heat coming off that pile of a billion inflamed apples, that's the equivalent hatred I currently have for you. Dude, you're playing zero DTs. Why are you holding on one minute swings? Because it's zero DTs. What do you think I'm holding on? Like, like you think I'm going to watch the 30 minute chart when I have zero DTs? Genuine question. If you are so bearish on the market, why do you short? Why not go short on the longer time frame? I am short on the longer time frame. The answer to that is that I am. And I've like, I have that. I mean, I have puts for this Friday. I have puts for mid-July. I mean, I've showed it all to you. Come on. Crater, 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 crater. The Qs actually did not make a new intraday low on that push. We got as low as 361.91, but the low is 361.78. So about 15 cents there. I don't know why I have this level drawn. I suppose just to make myself feel better. If we start going downward, come on, Apple, Apple, what a bounce Apple had another one that just bounced a dollar. Like it was absolutely nothing. Imagine that just like billions of dollars in market cap and minutes up down. Oh, wild. This was a side trade. This was a dumb trade from Friday. I was sitting here waiting to hop on the train to go to Brooklyn. And I was like, wow, market seems high. I bet it's going to come down. And it did come down. And then I was just too stupid to take my profits. The trade I'm currently managing is a dumb trade I had from Friday. Like it's not 
a trade that I'm like, oh yeah, I got into this morning and I'm like really stoked about it. And even the double down on it, I did the double down on it just to give myself a better chance of getting the fuck out. And then I had the chance to get out and then I still didn't. And now it's trading at 57 cents. So we went from what, like 40 cents up to a dollar 20 now back down to 54. So I was up 40%, 30%, and now I'm down 24. Like, it's just, it's just my bias, my mental bias is so strong. It's just getting in my way. And it's because my bias is based on a larger time frame, as in like a medium term swing. And unfortunately, I'm applying it to the shortest time frame. And when you have mismatches like that, that's just prime for getting in trouble. Prime for getting in trouble. Oh man, what is in my, I feel like I have a piece of fiberglass. Every time I touch this finger, there's something in it, like a little piece of fiberglass or something. Bias, the way you pronounce bias, I think I pronounce it properly. Am I saying bias strangely? Sounds exactly like the Swedish word bias, which means poop. I'm very mature and giggle inside when you say strong bias, my mental bias. Bias. Well, hey, now we all learned a little bit of the Swedish language. We all now know how to say poop in Swedish, bias. But it's pronounced B-A-J-S. Fuck me. Am I about to get steamrolled here? Are we, are, we might be putting in a higher low. Fuck. Dude, Apple, I need you to crater. Apple's the bane of my existence right now. Come on. Smash down, smash down, smash down. Are we missing any news? You guys, I asked you this, right? But the, the link's working now, the street beat link. Can anyone confirm that with me? I don't know why this other one stopped working. Why did this just go to a random ass? Well, no, now that says it is working. I'm so confused because the one that was broken and I saw it myself, it was redirecting to some strange video is now going back to street beat the way it should be. I'm so lost. It's working though. All right. Are we coming down? Are we coming down? Please. Market gods above, help me out. Help your boy out. Bring Apple back down to 187. Bring the spy to 432 would be sick. A dollar 37. Really what I want to see, what I'm really fishing for here is the, maybe I just need to better set up my magnets. Maybe I'm the reason for this. Maybe we need more magnets. I want to see this, 4,375. And that level is coming from the pre-market low, basically when we were all sleeping, like the overnight session, maybe we could see it better here. Uh, but we saw it around, this is the London low. Uh, so it happened around 3.30 in the morning where I hope we were sleeping. I hope you were sleeping. If you were up then, well, I don't know what's going on. Uh, maybe you just get up really early to go to the gym or something, which, hey, then I'm a, I'm a fan of that. But anyway, I'm looking for the test of the, I guess, early, early morning low, 3.30. We tagged it again at 4.45. This is my target, 4.375, uh, 4.376 right there, give or take a point, which the SPY... It's roughly 4.32. The SPY equivalent is right around 4.32. I'm looking for the test of that. The issue is, is I kind of need it to happen now because if it happens later, um, like I, I would much prefer this happens before lunch just because of theta decay, which is a vastly important thing for everyone to understand. Uh, if you're, especially if you're doing DFTs, especially if you're doing DFTs. So let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. So shoulder, head, shoulder, the target on that clearly got hit. Uh, as of now, I'm seeing a succession of lower highs, but the next sell-off will be telling of, do we make a new low? 
it needs to go below 4,380 to make a new low. Because if not, that means we have lower highs, higher lows, and then that means consolidation. So this next push down, the depth of this pull down is going to be pretty telling on really what's happening uh, in the short time frame. But we're seeing a bit of weakness. The SPY is coming up to 4,000, or excuse me, 433. Uh, so on the one minute, lower highs, lower lows, but it's just not, I mean, a V, a clear V formation, selling hard, bouncing hard. And now it just doesn't really know what's going on. Uh, Apple coming down a little bit. So feeling a bit better about that. But Tesla bouncing a little bit. Oh, I'm afraid to check my position because I'm worried that Theta is just beating the fuck out of me. Oh, okay. It's straight. Oh, I'm almost back to break even. It's trading at 71 cents. My average is 73. I have 200 zero DTEs. Uh, just went down to 69. Come on. Come on, brother. Uh, I do have an order for a quarter of my position still at 125. 125, which would be a 66% gain. Did I do that math right? If I'm in at 73, I sell at 125. That's a gain of 50. So it's about a 66% gain, which seems way too high, way too high for my first scale out. But fuck it. Someone's got to pay for this wedding. And it's it's not going to be my fiance because she doesn't trade at all. So in our relationship, if one person's going to degenerately make money, it's your boy. It's your boy. It's your boy. It's your boy. Come on. All right. At this point, I have to move my risk to 433.73. Apple coming down. Let's see if it can take out this low. Good. Tesla just made a fresh low. My next target on Tesla would be the opening at 250 flat. Key technical level, key psychologic level. The Qs are about to make a fresh low, a fresh intraday low uh, in the bottom left of your screen. Come on. And you didn't even triple. I don't have enough money in my account to triple down. My account is currently tapped. Uh, it's trading at 80 cents. Trading at, here's a, a portfolio check. Now it's trading at 77. So I'm in at 73, uh, currently trading at 79. I still have a full 200, but I do have sitting a sitting order right here to sell 50 at $1.25. Come on. No, what's with these bounces? This is what I'm, like I said, oops, geez, that was embarrassing. Um, my concern is this right here. How deep is this pullback? And I really wanted it to go below 4,380. Or we just have an even more difficult trade, unfortunately. Well, the queues are going down. That's That alert you just heard was on the queues breaking down a fresh intraday low. Interesting. Tesla... Come on, man. Just keep dying. Die, 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 die. Come on. Well, below 433 is a win on the SPY. I would say, okay, cool. But the 4,380 right here on the SPY, we we have some buying going on, which makes sense. Look at all this consolidation. This is a big consolidation range that appears as if there's some shenanigans if you will but apple might be leading us down apple might be leading us down uh matt did you propose to your totally real girlfriend by opening with i know i said i was a diamond handed eight forever but trust me i'll love you forever Tr hashtag trust me bro i kind of forget i think i was pretty nervous and like i think he just ended up having some word vomit and you're like, ah, I think it'd be like super sick if we like made this official, like, um, if it was more of like, ah, oh, man, I'm really ready to take our relationship to the next level. And I'm talking to threesome with the government, me, you and uncle Sam. I think it was something along those lines of <laughs> my new kink is getting the government involved in our relationship. And 
hey, here we are. Where do you think the keys are going to go in a couple weeks? No clue. Um, I, I have narrowed it down. I can't say no clue because I have narrowed it down to two potential playouts, which out of the world of infinite playouts, I think two is pretty good. Um, I, I think either up or down is really where I'm kind of at on that one. That's where I'm at on that one. Whoa, folks. Do you know why the market hasn't broken down yet? It's because we didn't get to 500 likes. What are you doing? You guys know the rules. You guys know the rules. We're at 346. 154 of you need to step up so I can ideally make money today. And if you don't, similar to the like Apple people, I hate you with the burning passion of a billion burning apples is pretty much where I'm at. And even Rumble, you got to get up to 250. We need 100 people on Rumble, 150 people on YouTube. What do I think about Disney for a long-term play? I'm a little worried about Disney right now because it it's just like of how much the stock's gotten beat up, beaten up because of its fight with Ron DeSantis. So I'm a little concerned. It seems undervalued if you ask me, but obviously the like legal battles are clearly no freaking joke. Ah, uh, the Q's. No, come on. We just had a little bit more to go. Position. Okay, 78, 79. So I'm, I'm a little in the green. I'm a little in the green. I'm a little in the green. Come on, keep coming down. No, it's... Mm. Look at that. 73 to 93. So it rips 20 cents in like 15 seconds. The cues are like that same, like, I don't know. I've really, really been noticing um, some intraday patterns lately where whenever you see a lower or high, it's so common now to barely overshoot, to barely undershoot. And if we think about what that actually means, it just means that I think people who are putting their stops right out of high and right out of low, basically it's snapping those people out of the market and then it reverts from there. So even this, like Apple, we saw a little bit of an overshoot to the downside. The Q's a little bit of an overshoot to the downside. Even the SPY this morning, that's exactly what we saw. We saw a little bit of an overshoot to the downside and then it bounces right from there. A little bit of an overshoot. So people getting a fill right below where they had stops for 32.50 and then it bounces $1.25. That's a good trade. If you had some calls in that, you're like, great, a dollar twenty-five. Why not? Like you would have got like, depending on how you played it, you could have been up a nice percentage. And then this time I got lucky and it came right back down to that level. But sometimes lately we we're seeing these overshoots and then it just keeps ripping. Uh, so definitely something to be on the lookout for, like without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, and the cues are doing it right now potentially. Even Tesla, I'm curious. Is it just going to be an overshoot to 250? Will we tag like 248, 249, and then it bounces right out of there? Yeah, classic liquidity sweep. Do you think Tesla will need to sell stock to raise money? No. No. I mean, nothing's impossible, but I don't see why they would have to do that. Actually, my Q position, the one that I didn't think was going to recover, instead of being down 97%, now it's only down 69. I'll take that. I'll take that. Add alert. Let's delete this one. I'm just walking down my alert so I know kind of what I need to be paying attention to. Here we go. Here we go. Let's mark the intraday low. Come on. Come on, come on. The Qs are looking a bit heavy. Tesla's looking a bit heavy. We should do a, a quick check-in on some of these other ones. All right. That's the SPY. NVIDIA is vomiting hard from 427 down to 414. Uh, NVIDIA, hard, hard vomit. Netflix also vomiting hard, 431 down to 421. Netflix losing $11. Jeez. Micron was good, now giving it back. Amazon was good, but now just kind of consolidating. Microsoft almost made a fresh low. 
Apple kind of giving it back. I would like to see that snap of 187. Let's check out Disney. Uh, Disney's actually looking good today, up 0.74. Walmart vomiting, bouncing now though. Uh, Target just ripping. Procter and Gamble vomited hard, but now recovering. Uh, Energy oil plays XOM up. CVX up. Energy is looking good. How's Oxy doing? Oxy is even bouncing, which is a nice change of pace for Oxy. Uh, what do we have? DAL. Uh, so we have airlines most likely vomiting. Airlines definitely vomiting. Uh, what was that one? UAL actually had a bigger push this morning. How's Shopify doing? Shopify popped. Shopify has been holding that breakout, honestly, pretty nicely. Pretty nicely Shopify has been holding. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, IEP. IEP. I need IEP to crack below 26, ideally 25. I do have some swing puts on IEP. Tesla, I would love for that to finally vomit. Rum, recapturing nine. Nice. I want it back up in that region. Consolidation. How's crypto looking? Bitcoin popped sideways. ETH pop sideways but bitcoin holding 30,000 eth holding just below 1900 how's pepe doing pepe 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 holding 16 just below 16 fuck are we bouncing right now i need this vomit we just need one more vomit so i can at least de-risk is it really gonna bounce out of here fuck me dude we just keep getting so close to where i can do something Come on. Like just so close. It looks good. And then. Mm. But the Qs are looking weak right now. And Tesla's looking weak right now. Well, hang on. Microsoft and Apple are probably ruling the day. So how do these guys look? But oil's bouncing. Oil's going to be. A decent chunk of the S&P 500. I don't know if my head's blocking it. But like this whole region, energy, there's a lot of green right here that's benefiting it. Uh, looks like healthcare is dragging the S&P 500 down. Consumer defensive. Uh, Target was looking good. Walmart's bouncing. Uh, all these tech plays, though, they should be helping me out. Financial's a little bit under pressure. But this is the sector that apparently is somewhat keeping the... S&P 500 alive right now. Apple's even looking. We come on, just crash, just crash, just crash. So tech's starting to look a bit more weak. The Qs are down 0.24% while the SPY's down 0.09. So the Qs are down more. And my very rudimentary understanding of what's going on right now is the SPY's down less because oil's holding things up. Looks like tech is starting to vomit. The Qs just made a fresh intraday low. Right here, 361.40. Um, the SPY is just a bit stronger because of oil. Uh, these oil plays. Look at the, like, look at Exxon holding, Chevron holding, Oxy holding. Healthcare is even starting to bounce back. Shit. Come on. NVIDIA. NVIDIA is vomiting. AVGO is coming down a bit. Amazon, I would like that. How's Meta looking? Meta's vomiting. Oh, I think I need oil. I think I need energy to turn for this to work out. Uh, Kevin, shout out. That's super nice. Come on, 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 come on. Now, 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 now. Apple slicing. That's what I want to see. Microsoft slicing. Dude, the spy just fucking follow. It's the other aspects. It's the other components of the spy keeping it up right now. But you would think that if like Apple starts to take stuff out, you would think that if Apple takes out its intraday low, it almost has to. Right? Is that crazy? I'm only down 61% now in those queues. I never thought that was going to come back. Uh, my average is 92. I'm not going to average down on that. If honestly, I might just try to get out for break even if it allows me, if the queues keep going. 
Uh, but what the money maker for me today is if the spy vomits. If the spy gets to 431 or sub 431, I mean, I'll be swimming in it, but that's a big ask, $1.50 to go. And every minute that passes, I'm just getting fucked by Theta. So, like, I need it now. Come on. There we go. There we go. Vomit. Do it. Do it. Do it. Forget about it. Do it. Just forget about it. All right. Well, at least I could probably move my wrist to 433. If we snap 432, I can move my wrist to 433. I am slowly but surely moving my wrist down, which is not as linear as you would think it is just because I am more so fighting theta. The Q's just vomited. Now I'm only down 48%, 49%. Come on, keep going. Keep Just give us that vomit, man. Just go. This is the alert I really want to hear. 4,375, 76. This is the London session low, the low technically of today's like full bar, especially in the futures market. Remember futures opens up at 6 p.m. the night before. So some from 6 p.m. last night to 5 p.m. tonight, that's one full bar. And the low of this bar is currently 4,375. And we hit it around, I don't know, three in the morning or something. 335 and then again at 450 this is the london session so london's session was definitely vomity there we go come on snap it snap it snap it snap it snap snap come on come come on what are you doing to me brother what are you doing to me brother It's just a quick vomit of seven, seven handles here. Seven points. What are we doing? What are we doing? Okay. We're heading the right direction. We're heading in the right direction, I think. I think we're heading in the right direction. I think we're going... Oh, I need more coffee for this. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. All right. Um, remember that large DFT, I'm in at 73 cents, and they're currently trading at 93. So I'm up 31% right now. But it's just because we keep, I just need that vomit down. I need that flush below the low, and it just keeps somehow saving itself. But Microsoft is looking weak. Apple is looking weak. Um, NVIDIA is looking weak. How's IEP doing? 20, somehow not looking that weak. Come on, just do it, man. Just give us that vomit. I'm... This is the in, the session low right here, 4,380. We're tagging it. We just sliced it. And this is the London low. This is what I want to see. And this is where I should be um, scaling out of a quarter of my position if I did like my rough mental math right. Um, I do have, just so you guys can see this, um, I have 200 of these DFTs, 200 in at 73, I'm trying to get out a quarter of them. Okay, that's good. I'm hearing a breakdown alert. Uh, I'm trying to get out of a quarter of them at $1.25. I'm trying to get out of a quarter of my position, 50 of my 200 at $1.25. Uh, the order sitting there, it, I have about 20 cents to go, a little less than 20 cents to go. Uh, this was my other one that, honestly, if it gets back to break even, I might just throw that order in there just to see if I could get uh, a buck. I'll take break even on that. A slight profit. We'll see how it goes. Shit. What just happened? Did it bounce? Fuck, dude. It, it just keeps looking like it's good. Look at We just tagged that low. Uh, why is this just becoming such a stupidly difficult play? They're just people are buying right at that. They had just so many sitting orders and... 
like I said, if I had a larger time frame play, which I have some, I don't care about those because it's trending the way I need it. But in the short time frame where every single minute bar, every single three minute bar, every single five minute bar, I'm losing value. Like time is like of the essence for me right now. And I just need this to get fucking rocked. Patience. I mean, I don't, it's not, I don't have time. It's just in that very first flush to the level we're at right now, I should have got an out of everything. And if I still like the play, I could have retaken that same strike for this Friday. The issue is I have a zero DT, which is super stupid. Mathematically, when you're playing most options, but especially zero DTs, you're playing with a lottery ticket. And most lottery tickets, you're the sucker. Most lottery tickets don't hit. And that's why they're attractive is because like sometimes they can be cheap. And um, if you hit it, you could hit it big. Um, so I'm basically attempting to baby a lottery ticket right now that just happens to be expiring today. But what's worse than that is like my tickets becoming like, it's almost like, as time passes, it's slowly getting Thanos snapped out of existence. Come on, just fucking crater it. Crater it, crater it, crater it. At this point, Theta has your bolt hole in its palm. Yes. Come on. Roll it into tomorrow. Honestly, I'd rather not. Honestly, I just want to get out of this and kind of be like, wow, I'm super lucky and move on with my life and film some videos and do some interviews and call some sponsors and email some of my managers. Like, I kind of just want to get my money and kind of be done with it and come back to the game fresh tomorrow. There we go. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Fucking end it. Shoot it. Crush it. Crush it, crush it, crush it. Uh, Apple almost back at its opening low. What a brutal trick they market played today. Rip it for the first hour and then just dump it on everyone. Don't forget about our weekly fitness meeting. Yo, Robbie, I'm down seven pounds. I don't know if you were here this morning when I was talking about it. So two weeks in, down seven pounds which I feel like is a good pace. I feel like I could have been down 10 if I didn't. Basically, I just make my weekends my cheats. Like, I don't, I don't know. I feel like I end up cheating on my, like, meals on Saturday and Sunday, but then keep it together Monday to Friday. I still work out every day, though. Um, Honestly, Matt's secret here, I think one of the best ways to get over a hangover is just to do cardio and sweat the alcohol out on Saturday, well, I ended up getting up Saturday afternoon because your boy was a little goosed. Um, but I got myself onto the stair stepper and I felt like garbage, garbage. I was just way too hungover, drank too much. Um, and then I did the stair stepper enough and like you could taste the alcohol in your sweat. But by the time I um, like got done, I was feeling so much better. Like I think you literally just need to get the toxins out of your body. But also what's weird is even though I'm trying to lose weight and most of it's cardio focused. So what I do basically six days out of the week, I do a cardio session and a lifting, lifting session. And then that seventh day, I only do cardio or I'll do like more of like active recovery, like stretching or something. So really it's like a six day program with the seventh day. Like I just, whatever, go for a walk or some shit like that. Um, but what's interesting is even though I'm attempting like, this is like the first cut I've really tried to attempt in my life where I'm like, oh, like what's my nutrition? What's this? What's that? What's the other thing? I've never really like successfully pulled one off before. Um, but what's interesting about this one is because of the lifting that I'm also doing, uh, it's like I'm simultaneously, all my numbers are going up. Um, what was, I, I was, I don't know, like for me, like all of my major lifts, my bench, my deadlift, my squat, uh, my max amount of pull-ups, like all the, all those numbers are all increasing right now, which I think is interesting. Dude, is this going to vomit or not? Do we flush it by ascent? Fuck. What am I at? Do I just like kill this position? It's trading at 90 cents. And once again, I'm in at 73. So I'm up 23% right now. Dude, I just want a flush, like one flush. 
Uh, do you exercise after the Twinkies? I should, but generally I just like to let the Twinkies sit. I also like how I'm just like, oh, like in terms of nutrition, I'm fasting now. When in reality, I just naturally fasted anyway. I'm not much of a breakfast eater. I had the stream with you guys. Most of the time, the stream ends at 11. And then after 11, I'm usually doing work. So I kind of didn't eat lunch till one anyway. And now, even though I haven't really changed my eating habits, I just now call it fasting. And the fact that I'm doing nothing different, but I'm calling it fasting has definitely caused me to lose weight. Like, if you're fasting and you're not telling anyone about it, does it really count? Uh, I haven't read any articles about it, but I wouldn't be surprised if you if they exist. Of, I, I think fasting only really works if you tell people about it. Like, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's something going on that, like, anyone who's willing to listen, you have to tell them that you're fasting or it doesn't count and you don't lose weight. But just a thesis of mine. Here we go. This is it. This is it. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. Three, 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 one, two, three, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one. Now. Five, four, three, two, one. Dead. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one now it's time for the actual countdown 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 explosion initiated <laughs> Is this it? <laughs> Reverse of polarity. Maybe we do need to try a different one. Maybe we need... Let's hit him with a new color that we haven't really hit him with in a bit. Kind of this, like, teal. I don't know what this does. Never used it before, so why not? Right, look at it. it just... Someone keeps fucking buying this shit right at the bottom. Fuck me. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fuck, fuck. What is this bullshit? We cannot, like, just recently, we have not had nice follow-throughs whatsoever. We've had so much goddamn choppiness at all supports, all resistance. And it happens both ways. Like, right here, we can't get this breakdown. But then even this morning, when the market ripped to 4,400, we kind of got above it, smack, kind of got above it, smack, kind of got above it, smack. Like, we're just in such a chop, bullshit fucking market right now. Oh, this level is a big fight line. Yes, 100%. And unfortunately, even if the Bears win, I still might end up losing here because of the time. I cannot stress this enough of how dumb theta shit is. I'm actually just above break even, even though we're at this level. The fact that... This level we're at right now, even though the market's like obviously just vomited and we're bouncing a little bit, I am now break even here, even though previously I was like break even back here. That shows you theta. Like every minute this is not going in my favor, theta is eating me alive. If you are an options trader, especially a short-term options trader, I cannot stress the importance of like understanding theta and theta decay and its impact on you enough. Like there is no overstressing of it. At this level, I'm now break even when earlier today, an hour ago, I was break even about like 50, 75 cents higher. Like that's just, that's how fucking insanely just ridiculous this shit is. Uh, you need to understand theta. Come on. I just want this to get smacked so bad right here. It, it could just be a classic double bottom. It could be. Bottom, we bounce, we bottom again, and as soon as it gets above 433.73, we just fucking rip and we're off to the races. That is obviously possible. I'm hoping that we end up testing 432.25 again and absolutely crater through it. I mean, we just do. We are bouncing so fucking hard, man. 
Dude, even on the second time down, I think it, that time it got up to 110. I just couldn't get out. I didn't de-risk at all. I just, I really was absurdly confident on the second time down. I'm like, oh, we're coming. We're testing. As soon as I heard that alert go off, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm getting out of quarter of my position. Um, I really thought that would, I really thought we were going to this London low of 4,376 on this push, very much around 1120. I was like, okay, cool. We just broke that low. It makes a lot of sense in my mind that we flush to the, over the bar, the daily low which in the futures market was happened to align with the London session around 3.30 in the morning. I was so overly confident we were vomiting to this low, but that's what I guess overconfidence gets you in the game of trading. It just gets your fucking face ripped off. Son of a bitch. Son of a fucking bitch. Fuck. Uh, I don't. I just don't get it. it. Fucking Apple again. Mother fucking Apple. So many dumb dipshits buying this right now. Not that they're actually dumb. It's a smart risk to reward trade. It's just I'm calling them dumb because I'm frustrated because it's going against me. But in terms of risk reward, buying right here and just risking it, minimal risk, you get a good pop. I totally get it. I'm just calling them dumb because they're going against me. Ah, uh, come on. What time is it? We're way past. I should have stopped streaming like half an hour ago. This is, if anything, getting me closer to doing something I shouldn't be doing, making dumb moves. All right. Come on. Yes. Bring it back to 82. Bring it back to 82. This magnet color is not the color that works. Apparently write that down in terms of your notes. This, this teal is not the right color. Maybe we, maybe our real issue, maybe we need to try, uh, maybe like a weird, golden brown yellow yeah i don't think we've ever used this color before let's see how effective it is let's see how effective this is we'll make it even bigger we'll obviously optimize our chances here let's see if the old golden yellow with a hue of brown oversized magnet is really what we need in the current market condition it's a tough market for magnet traders these days. I will let you know that. Not the easiest time to learn about magnet trading. But hopefully we found a bit of the secret sauce. Dude, apples bounces. Holy shit. Impressive, to say the least. NVIDIA, not really doing anything. Tesla, still looking weak. Tesla, like I said, oh, I think we even called this out before it happened of like these flushes below the level just to a pop. And granted, this pop was nothing to run home to mom about, but that's exactly what it happened. Like we're seeing this and like there's just so many examples, especially over the last month of re support and resistance actually being support and resistance, but it's still involving like considerable fake outs. Oops, I wanted to do the five. Just some stop loss hunting for both bulls and bears. Feels like it's just happening more and more and more. God damn. 75 cent bounce like it's just nothing, dude. This market. Fuck me. Fuck. Uh, fuck. Fuck. This is, this is fucking so stupid. Why did I not just get the fuck out? Dude, the perfect bounce. I mean, look at this. The low was 432.28. The low here was 432.28. To the exact cent. 
this was the support. And it's just like the exact fucking scent. Fuck me. Dude, Apple is just a monster. It'll be interesting when we get the next, um, like, 13F filings, like, at the end of the quarter, how all the players managing over $100 million have to report, like, what they're in. It, it feels like these players have to be just sizing up on Apple, like the big guys. And I'm just so curious who's doing it. Like, I wonder what their thesis is. I wonder what price they got to fill at. Like, are they somehow hedging it with options? Like, I'm just so curious because what's going on in Apple is we're not talking retail money. We're talking serious money. Apple has been doing a ton of buybacks, but it feels like even more than that. I know they're doing buybacks and I know not only is that bullish, but it's actually just buying pressure. And I like, I get that, but even for the people running the financial departments in these companies, like why would they even be buying at these levels? Like you would think that like they would still want to buy it a little bit more on a discount. Um, people are getting ready for a possible hostile takeover of Apple. I don't think there's a company in the world that could do a hostile takeover of Apple. I'm going to give you some advice you gave us for our relationships, Matt. You just need to calm down. <laughs> I appreciate that. You're probably right. Oh, man. Come on. This magnet. I mean, I I'm putting a lot of faith in this particular magnet setup. Maybe we just need to add a little bit of resistance right here. Maybe some structural emoji resistance. I mean, I just don't know what else I could do. I'm putting downward red rockets as resistance. I'm putting a giant magnet to increase selling pressure and decrease buying pressure. I, I just, it's frustrating when you feel like you're using all the tools at your disposal and it's just not working the way you think it should be working. Like just kind of that helpless feeling of being like, dude, I'm using all the tools to the best of my ability and it's just not panning out. Fuck, dude. All the fucking Apple. Fucking Apple, dude. Oh, man. 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 And really, the frustration is all because it's my fault. On this flush here at 1040, whatever it was, 1030, I should have rolled it all. Or I should have just took my money and moved on. Like, the real frustration here is because of me being greedy and not sticking to a plan. And I'm not sticking to a plan because I'm not really in, I don't really have a plan. This was a dumb fucking trade that got out of hand that forced me to like double down, triple down, quadruple down. And now instead of having like 20 or 30 or 50 puts, which is manageable for my account size, now I have 200 and it's just being greedy. So my plan's thrown out the window. It's just more like, a, dude, I hope I make a lot of fucking money. Um, or I hope I don't lose money. And then every time I go up money where I don't have to lose it, I'm just like, well, what if it goes a little bit more? Cause every cent is inherently what a hundred dollars for me that it moves. Cause I have a hundred contracts. So every cent is a hundred dollars, $200. Cause I have 200 contracts. So every cent in this, so it's just greed. It's lack of a plan. It's trading. It's not really on tilt. It's not really revenge. It's a little bit of revenge trading because I'm still mad about that Tesla trade. I think there's a lot psychologically going on and it doesn't add up to anything good. Uh, it's, it's, it's just not adding up to anything fucking solid. Uh, next time you're green, move it to break even. Well, if I move, like they're so volatile that like, I'm in at 73. It's currently trading at 81. Like I am green, but like, even if I set it to 73, that could just be like a 25 cent pop in the spy. And then it comes down anyway. So what I'm attempting to do, like uh, now that I'm like saying this aloud with all of you and I'm attempting to formulate some sort of a plan is when that quarter gets it, because I'm in 200 puts. So 50 of them, I'm attempting to sell at a dollar 25, which hopefully on this flush I get. As soon as that happens, I'm going to move the risk on all of them to break even. Actually, not. I'll, I'll move it above break even. So I'm in at 73. I'll set it at 75. So m no matter what, I'm guaranteeing myself money. 
Um, so that's like my current plan. I needed to go far enough away where sending the stop loss is like actually realistic. Here we go. Okay, the new magnet's working. Come on. I, I just want this fucking London low, man. Come on, magnet. Come on, magnet. Come on, magnet. Come on. Here's where we're at right now. Um, these, the bottom two, IP, Tesla, those are for July, July 21st, July 14th. So a little bit of leaps. Uh, the Tesla is almost back in money. IEP just not go my way. Like the volatility dried up on IEP. But what I'm dealing with today is right here, SPY and Qs. The Qs, um, I didn't have much faith in. They were down 97%. I'm only down 45. I do have an order to get out of these for just above break even at a buck. So I'm trying to sell all 30 just at a dollar. They do expire today. The play that I'm like really trying to manage right there are, both of these are for today, June 26, June 26. SPY 433s. Um, it, it just popped to a dollar and now it's already back down. I mean, fuck me, man. What's, what's even going on? Look at that. Like this, this is what I'm saying is one little pop and it, it went from a dollar down to 80. Like it lost 20% just like that. And this is it. Like, I know it's really easy to just be like, oh, like uh stop loss, set it to break even. But my point is here is like little gyrations in the market, which are like arguably due to randomness are a huge percentage move. So like if, if it were to pop to like 86 right now, not even make a fresh highlight, just say it pops up to 86, the, the futures market for the SPY, mine would probably actually be underwater, even though that's not technically a breakout. Like, and this is um, kind of like one of the dark underbellies of zero DTEs and how they move, especially as time's passing. Like if something isn't going in your favor, like every single minute of like, in this case I have puts, but like if I, even if I had calls every minute, just being green, 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 like it, it's super detrimental from a percentage basis of the value. Like mathematically zero DTs are the definition of degeneracy. You are buying a lottery ticket. There's a very, very low chance it pays, but if it does pay, it could pay big, but the chance of you making money, it's just not high. It's not there. The mathematical nature of this stuff, it's just simply not in your favor. It's just not, it's just not. Zero DT, theta destroys, yeah. Like more than like I could even like possibly articulate. Like if you start to look into the real math of how much you lose just in every single one, like even this, you guys saw that I was up a dollar and it just bounced four points, which is about, I don't know, let's see how much it bounced. It bounced 50, it, it bounced 25 cents. So the SPY just bounced 25 cents and I, my premium went from being worth a dollar to 75 cents. It lost 25% of its value to the point that now I'm actually back to being break even. This is what I'm saying is like for this to work, this type of shit, like it, it's degeneracy. It's like full on hardcore degeneracy. So if you're doing it, you got to be careful. And most of the time, actually, probably there's not really a good reason to ever be doing it unless you're just looking to like fuck off and like do a little. This isn't trading. This isn't investing. This isn't doing anything like systematic. This is just like gambling. This is just like shooting first and asking questions second. It, it's it's not the most realistic way to engage in the market. It, it's gambling. 25 cent bounce for a 25% loss. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. Is the value I'm at right now, when we were here this morning, I was up 40%. And even though I'm at the exact same value in the SPY now, my premium, because of theta, because of also volatility drying up, I'm now to break even. Even though this exact same price in the SPY an hour and a half ago, uh, well, I was up 30, 40%. So you went from a potential profit of 5K to even, and you didn't take your profits. Why? Because everyone says that so easily, especially when you're streaming your own trades. And whenever anyone says it, like to me, it's a little funny because it's the same reason why you don't take your trades when you're up and then it bounces back because you think it's going to go more. Like there's no difference. Like I get those comments all the time. Like, whoa, you were up and you didn't take it. Like, why didn't you take it right there? Because I didn't know that this was the bottom. Like, folks, I, I'm simply just like you that at 1040 this morning here, let's go to the one minute at 
1040 exactly when we hit 432.28. I didn't know that was the bottom. Like right there, you're just like, oh, I, I think it's like, it, we just got a breakdown. Looks like it's going to go more. And that's like one of the, like out of the comments I get, I definitely enjoy those because like they just make me laugh. Everyone's just like, well, why didn't, like the question is basically, why didn't you bottom tick and top tick every single trade? Fucking if I could, I would. I 100% would. Uh, and the reason I don't bottom tick and top tick is because it's borderline fucking impossible because no one can tell you what's going to happen at the very next trading bar. Like, that's why. Is it like, people act like it's so easy. Like, why didn't you just sell when you had your max profit thus far in the day? I don't know. And then no matter what, like, knowing my luck, even like, let's just say like I had some sort of magic ball that told me 432.28, great, take your profit. And I did it. And then my luck is it keeps selling off. Everyone be like, dude, why'd you get out? It, it was trending in your favor. That's the, from a psychology standpoint, when you're day trading or doing any thing of trading, the human brain has an amazing ability to always focus on the negative. And here's what I mean by that is, let's say a, a trade is going in your favor, right? And whatever. Let, let's just use this one as an example. So it comes down, comes down, comes down, and then it bounces out of there. And many of you are asking the question, why didn't you get out? That's greedy. You should have taken your profits. But then on the flip side, let's say that it didn't play out this way. Let's say this was actually a breakdown. We broke below Friday's low. We broke um, below today's intraday low. It, it's a legitimate breakdown. We break down and it keeps selling. So then the question is, it's like, oh, you weren't disciplined enough. It was trading in your fa like in your favor. Why didn't you just have more discipline to go? So no matter what the situation is, um, individually, we all have this going in our brain. And then obviously you see it in the comments as well. You always just pick the one that like in hindsight was perfect. Your explanation is either why were you too greedy or why weren't you disciplined? And you always pick the one that makes you feel like shit. If it keeps going in your favor and you took your profits, even though you took your profits, the whole argument is, oh, you need to be more disciplined. And then in this scenario, it went in my favor, bounced out of it. And the question is like, oh, why are you so greedy? So no matter what you do, they just, it, it, it's a, it's a tricky, shitty thing of like the human brain, but like we all just do it. Uh, I think most people are, are looking at your PL and way higher than their PL because you can take much bigger trades. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're looking, well, I know there's people in here who trade way larger than I do, and then there's people in here who trade trade smaller than I do. I mean, like, I'm well aware of that. Like, we all have very, very different size accounts. I mean, I actively know there's people watching right now who have multiple six figures in their account, and I know there's people in here right now who are trading a couple hundred dollars. Like, it happens like we all like you should never focus on the magnitude like that like that the the game of trading is a game of percentages um for sure like i would not focus on the magnitude so if you were just looking up the dollar amount that i was up no i mean a better argument would be matt your account was up 10 percent. you're fucking stupid for not taking it and i'd be like yeah no uh you, you're right I, I you are accurate to call me stupid for that but just to say you're up X amount, I mean, if someone's up 5K on like a $5 million account, like that's nothing to them. But if you're up 5K on a $500 account, completely different story. So focusing on magnitude is not what anyone should be focusing on. Uh, at least you took partials. No, no, the order just didn't get hit. I was like cents away. It just didn't actually, does Weeble even have that? I want to see how close I got to getting my fill. And actually, now I'm down. Now I'm down by 13%. Fuck me, man. Uh, how high did this get today? Options, positions, uh, time frame. I had an order at $1.25. And it got as high as $1.19. So unfortunately, it, it, I just didn't get a fill. It was six cents away. So it would have been really, really nice. And now are we bouncing even more? Fuck me. Fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. Uh, 
so why did you not want the 66% but not the 40%? So why did you want the 66% and not? So when I put in a dollar 25, it was on this first vomit and I just thought it was vomiting because I saw the breakdown from Friday. I saw the breakdown from the intraday low. So I just like, I guess psychologically, I don't, I just put in a dollar 25 because I don't know. I think we, we kind of, our brains like work better in those like a dollar, dollar 25, dollar 50, like those nice whole values. Um, so I think that's more of a psychology thing of why I just right away, I saw it pushing, I saw that 110, 150 and I was like, okay, great. 125 is right there. I'll de-risk and take some of my money out. Um, so I don't have like the best reason. I, I wasn't thinking 66%. It's more of, I just thought I saw it above 115, 115, 116. So I just put in like the next value where my like brain like noticed and it was 125, um, for like I, that's my reasoning for that i'm not saying that's a good reasoning because like it's it's the same thing of why we see reactions at nice values of like 4400 or here if i could bring this up um like 4400 this morning it's just, it's just a nice round value uh and humans our brains like we just very much react to those types of values um so we got smacked there. A lot of people were probably selling at 4,400. Not that 4,400 is inherently that much different than 4,405 or 3,900 or 4,395. Like they're essentially like very, very close, but we just, it's a human game and humans just like those numbers. What are you risking at this point? See, that's a good question that I probably should know the fucking answer to. And this bounce is just eating me alive. Shit. Fuck. Um, well, if the spy successfully pushes for 3350, I think we could probably call this move a double bottom or a triple bottom. But at that point, it would actually be a huge percentage, uh, percentage wise on the options, because remember, these aren't necessarily linear. Uh, the way this stuff moves, it's not linear at all. So in the spy, that's kind of my line in the sand, but that would probably be like 50% loss if I like am roughly guessing right now. So what I'm praying for is not only that we sell off, but I need the market to sell off like now, like now is very, very imperative to me. Um, and I'm just hoping that the cues like can't hold. I'm hoping the cues take out this low. Um, I'm hoping the spy takes out its low. I mean, it was a perfect double bottom at 432.28, perfect double bottom. But I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't want to be too biased here, but I am seeing Apple get smacked at this low. So this support turning into resistance, I'll feel a bit better if it takes out 186.60. I'm seeing the SPY getting smacked at 433, but is it really smack if it's only down by 7 cents? Uh, so uh, I'm just watching, 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 watching and praying, watching, praying and hoping. But on that note, okay. I'll stream till noon because I do have to take care of some work. Um, in in case I don't get out of this position between now and in the next three minutes, uh, I'll update everyone on locals of what I end up doing. Um, I pray none of you are in this trade with me because it is very much a stupid trade. Um, it is very much. A, if one of you were in this trade and like in my exact position and you came to me and you said, Matt, what should I do with this? My advice, it's trading at 73 cents or 66 cents and I'm in at 73. My advice would be get out as soon as you break even 73, 74 cents. And if you still like it, roll. That's what my advice would be. If you still are feeling like that biased about the situation, I'd say you got out for break even. Cool. You didn't lose anything. Risk management. And then you can always re-enter the same thing just for a farther out expiration where theta isn't fucking you. So I guess on that note, maybe I should trade that way. Maybe I should just put in an order to get the fuck out. A DFT versus a DTE. DT is days till expiration. So a zero DT is zero days till expiration as it's expiring that day. A DFT is a dumb fucking trade. So DT, like a zero DT is most likely a DFT, but there are longer time frames as well, which are, it makes it not necessarily a DFT. Fuck. I really thought we were just about to get this breakdown. 
on Apple. Apple's looking a bit heavy and then it fucking bounces right goddamn out of it. Man, spot the spies popping more than tech. Is it oil? Oil's picking up again. At first, Apple was fucking me today and it still kind of is, but it's this oil bounce back. Oil is, look at oil. Oil just had a nice pop right there. The last 15 minutes, look at this. Last 15 minutes of the spy popping. Um, not popping, but like 15 minutes of it being green. That's with oil popping, which is perfectly aligning with Exxon popping, Chevron popping, Oxy. Like it's oil right now is keeping the spy up. Well, see the cues aren't really getting that. The spy just broke out of this, like it broke out of the hype, a potential market structure shift. Well, the cues aren't, the cues are just kind of going flat right now. Fuck. Fuck me. Amazon, how was, I mean, techs is, is, Amazon actually looks a bit heavy. Meta bouncing a little bit, but still kind of heavy looking. Microsoft, definitely heavy looking. Google, heavy, but it just bounced recently. It seems like some things are catching a bit of a bid over the past 15 minutes. Like the last three, five minute bars, the 15 minute bar does seem to be having a little bit of a bounce across the board in general. Um, oil is notably bouncing. Uh, AVGO, AVGO. Yeah, yeah. So Broadcom's bouncing. That's a bigger company. Airlines, UAL, LUV, DAL. Airlines are all bouncing right now. Uh, what else do we have? Micron, a little bit of a bounce there. Yeah, I mean, the last 15 minutes, some bids have been found in the market for sure. Uh, I think end of day, we flush down to a new low. Wouldn't mind that, but I'd prefer that it happens like fucking now. Dude, I am getting destroyed. Fuck me. Currently down 30%, which is obviously better than I was, but God damn. All right, folks, it is noon o'clock. So unfortunately you won't be able to see the exit of this play, but I will keep you updated in locals. Show Street Beat a little bit of love. They are the sponsor of today's stream pinned to the top of chat in the description of the video, but namely you just download the app to your phone, whether it's your iPhone, your Android, whatever. Um, put in the code Matt on the very first page when you're signing up, and that's how you get anywhere from five to 5,000 as a bonus, depending on the size of your initial deposit. They do not accept payment for order flow. They do have pre-built strategies. You can build your own strategies. You can also buy and sell stock as you so choose. So you could do it as a mixture. You're not like forced to use strategies, but I actually really, really enjoy them. But anyway, show them a little of love. It is free to download and make sure you use that code Matt when you do so. Don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll catch you later today. We are going to be streaming once again for Power Hour. So I'll see everyone at 3.30 p.m. ET. I appreciate all the good vibes. And obviously a final reminder, when I end up exiting this position, I will let everyone know on local. So make sure on your locals, mattcores.locals.com. I will catch you later. Enjoy your lunch. Peace out.